content without its knowledge. Forrest wrote in her 51-page order, Silk Road was specifically and intentionally designed for the purpose of facilitating unlawful transactions. Albrecht is alleged to have knowingly and intentionally constructed and operated an expansive black market for selling and purchasing narcotics and malicious software and for laundering money. By far, the most closely followed argument in Albrecht's April defense motion, however, had been its contention that Bitcoin users can't be accused of money laundering because Bitcoin isn't money. But Forrest tossed out that argument too. She points out in her opinion that neither the IRS nor FinCEN have the power to define money laundering laws, and she said it was easily clear enough that Bitcoin had functions as money in the Silk Road's dealings. Sellers using Silk Road are not alleged to have given their narcotics and malicious software away for free. They are alleged to have sold them. The money laundering statute is broad enough to encompass use of Bitcoins in financial transactions. Any other reading would, in the light of Bitcoin sold reason d'etre, be nonsensical. FPP Radio News is brought to you by $6 Shirts. $6 Shirts is one of the top t-shirt companies on the web, and they want to be the t-shirt company for the Bitcoin marketplace. Shop $6 Shirts using my affiliate link, 6.fppradio.com, and help support FPP Radio News. The AP reports... German government spokesman Steven Siebert said in a statement, the representative of the U.S. intelligence service at the U.S. embassy has been asked to leave Germany. U.S. officials described Germany's actions as extraordinary. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Following the conclusion of yet another day marked by a litany of tedious and unavoidable realities, The Onion spoke with sociologist Dr. Timothy Coghill, who told reporters that the nation would be forced to go through all of it again tomorrow. As our projections demonstrate, tomorrow, like today, every man, woman, and child in America will wake up and do it all again. All of it, including traffic, the workday, bad coffee, your kid's soccer game, laundry. A struggling economy. Statistical evidence also showed that the nation would once again endure traumatic childhood memories, Twitter, anxiety, poverty, consumerism, rampant abuses of the legal system, joint pain, uh, racial inequality, global warming, the steady erosion of civil liberties, violence, loneliness, disease, unresolved intimacy issues, the ravages of age, hunger, sexual frustration, existential dread, the looming specter of death. For more on this unending story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Um, with a couple things with the store. And one thing led to another, but there was no fist thrown. No fist thrown. Take control toll free here, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. Of course, we'll take your calls about whatever happens to be on your mind. The we in the studio tonight is me, Ian. And Ellen. And Ellen. Uh, Is this our first show since Porkfest? I think it is because you took like a week off last week. Yeah, I took last week off because I was traveling up north. But um, I don't know. I'm excited to be back. Yeah, and how was Porkfest for you? It looked like you were having a good time. I had a blast at Porkfest. I did things there that I've never done before. Oh my, hopefully all of them good. <laughs> yes, okay. and it was nothing but good experiences. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I certainly had a good time, and uh, of course our listeners were able to tune in and listen. If you missed it, you can always go back in our archives over at freetalklive.com, and you can download as many episodes of the show as you like. Ellen, of course, is here tonight from ALP. We've got a lot on the, uh, the you know, on the, the table that we can discuss here tonight, including 14,000 draft notices sent to men who were born in the 1800s. Goodness. Uh, that seems They're like a little a late. Up. Yeah, let's go to the phones first, though. Aaron is in Philly. Aaron, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Ellen. Hello, Aaron. Hi, nice to hear from you. Oh, well, we're hearing from you, but yes, welcome. I was listening to my podcast, so I guess I'm a little behind, but I was hearing about you guys talking the other night about uh, pooping in people's lawns. Ooh, not a Um, good topic? This this was a caller who had called in to try to understand or or push the boundaries of uh, of property rights, and he... uh, 
he had a few different scenarios, which one of them involved pooping on someone's t uh, ten acre property, and you know what was that level of property rights violation? And you know my answer there was, well, odds are good you're never gonna know, the owner's never gonna know, but even if the owner did know about it. Uh, the amount of time and effort it would take to prosecute someone or to go after that person for that, if they even if they had evidence of it somehow, uh, would be very, very you know inefficient. You would it would cost you a lot to go to court and things like that in comparison to the amount of money it would take you to go out with a plastic bag and clean it up or spray it away or something like or that. Or collect a sample. Like I, I'm sure right, that right. it means more to somebody who has a small lawn as compared to somebody who owns like ten acres of land. Mm. But still, that. That's so rude. Why would it's you do rude. that? Well, his scenario was that uh, <laughs> you know he was out on the out in the woods and walking, and you know happened to be walking by your property and just really had, had the to urge go. to go. Really had to go. Yeah. I mean, there you go. Well, that was what we were right. talking about. So, what was the, the I guess your call about? All right. Well, a couple of years ago, I was moving, and I had a friend who was a sheriff's deputy who was helping me move, and. Uh, you always help when you go out, have fun, move, help you move. You take them out for dinner or something, you just appreciate them. Yeah, absolutely. So I took them for a Chinese buffet, and afterwards, afterwards, we were driving down the truck down the road, and uh, I ran out of gas because my dad didn't let me know that he had uh, a broken gas gauge. Uh oh. So at the same time, my friend, the sheriff's deputy, <laughs> had to take go to the bathroom really bad, and we're kind of in town. This is one and two acre property. So he crawls in a bush in this guy's house in this yard to take a poop. Oh, <laughs> Lo and behold, a police cruiser pulls up. <laughs> and uh, uh -oh. and they start barking at me because I'm within six inches of the white line. I'm a little too close to the road for their comfort, and they're not they're going to ticket me unless I push this away. About the same time, this my friend, this cop, comes out of the bushes. <laughs> And then I start asking him, what were you doing back there? <laughs> and he gets this, his face turned so red, he couldn't even speak to tell him what he was doing. So they just take a guess, like, oh, are you take like, he's like, I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Finally, he comes out. And they're like, oh, I just take a leak, whatever. And then they get back, well, you and your friend need to push this off. And he's like, oh, I'm a sheriff's deputy, blah, blah, blah. And they start shooting the breeze then. And this whole time, I'm thinking, man, Here's this guy with a complete disrespect for this guy's property. The police are right there to catch him, and they're more concerned about me being too close to the road when I ran out of gas. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder uh, what their anyway, response would have been had he not been a sheriff's deputy. Uh, would they have given him, uh, you know, would, would, were they giving him a break because he was one of the boys? And by the way, Daryl Perry joining us here on the third microphone. Uh, go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> They never found out that he was pooping. They ah. just assumed it was urination. But apparently public urination wasn't uh, a high enough crime to bother him about. Or, yeah, I thought that was anyway. interesting because he did, you know, as it a law up. enforcement officer, you'd think you'd know better than to tell the police that you just committed a crime. In most places, uh, peeing in public is a crime. I don't think it should be. I mean, as long as you're not peeing in you know, somebody's right. building Don't they get put on the well, sex on offenders list property. for public nudity or something like that? They well, can in some places. Yeah, it depends. Here in Keene, you'd probably just get charged with uh, effluence is what it's called. It's a violation. Yeah, it's a town ordinance violation. So you wouldn't get a sex offender for that. And the way they have the ordinance written in Keene, if you are wearing a diaper of any age. If you are wearing? If you are wearing a okay. diaper, no matter how old you are. And you soil yourself, that is technically <laughs> effluence. Because the, the ordinance is written, uh, urination or defecation in any place other than a toilet facility is effluence. And but they toilet, have to prove it. Toilet facility is defined as water closet, urinal, or they, there's something else that's included in there. Yeah, but they'd have to prove that you were effluencing in the diaper. <laughs> Okay, if there's soil if, in the, you know, like if there's urine or defecate in right, the diaper. But what are they going to do? Take your diaper off and inspect it? Right. You would have to consent to a search in that case, and that would not be a good idea. You don't want to consent to, to a search of your diaper. 
Now, this you would make an interesting civil but disobedience. But still, e- even if somebody is changing their baby's diaper, mm, oh, I see the what you're dirty saying. diaper is proof that yeah. affluence happened. That's true. But All babies are criminals. Well, but wait a minute. And Keen. Isn't effluence only if it's in public? You know, public the, or private. Or private. Hmm. Well, I'm glad that we had you here, Daryl, so you could uh, recite verbatim almost the uh, the effluence uh, Yeah, ordinance. and it's funny because I was actually posting the ordinance for someone in the uh, one of the chat rooms on Liberty.me mm-hmm. a couple of days ago. Just because I do think that it would be funny to walk into the Keene Police Department wearing an adult diaper, pee myself, and then tell them, I (laughs) just peed myself, I'm wearing a diaper, arrest me. Just Just to see what they would do. It would be funny. Anybody doing anything in a diaper, I think, would be pretty funny video. (laughs) Whatever the the activism is would be pretty hilarious. Um, Aaron, thanks for the call tonight. Any final thoughts you want to share? Aaron going once, going twice. Uh, if I got a minute, it's, it's funny the double standard. It's funny to mention the double standard because it wasn't that long later. I spent some time in a jail cell and uh, met a guy who was 67 who had just been through a divorce, was out drinking to, and uh, peed in the street. And he mm. was in jail there with me for public indecent exposure <laughs> and charged with exposing himself to minors, I guess. With some, Yikes. Some young girls complained they saw him peeing in the street. So he was looking at those kind of charges, uh, sex offender status. That's and terrible. Yeah, that's really upsetting. No prior. Thanks, Apparently Aaron. He... Appreciate the call. Yeah. So I was going to say, I, I feel bad for interrupting him, but apparently oh, but... he didn't know the coat trick. Are you? What is that? If you want to pee in public... All you have to do, like, if you're a man, I can't do this as a woman. Unless well, I... you could because they've got the little okay. thing that you hold <laughs> that looks like a funnel. Is. What is the anyway, trick? if you're wearing a long coat, all you have to do is reach your hands inside your coat and then walk backwards as you're peeing so that you don't get it on your legs or on the coat. And wow, that sounds you're not, really You're not like exposing difficult. yourself to anyone. <laughs> that, yeah, that just sounds very odd <laughs> and cumbersome. <laughs> But I mean, if it's the only option you that have, if you're out in public, <laughs> walking backwards <laughs> with liquid coming out. From, yeah, yeah. I just I find it kind of upsetting that the cops were not concerned at all, especially once they found out he was a police officer. Like, oh, it's okay that he was going in public. Toll free numbers eight fifty five four fifty free. You know, if you were gonna do any kind of diaper activism, uh, Daryl, and <laughs> sounds like a whole new category, um, then. I'd be really concerned about whether the adult diaper worked, and you know, I have no experience with this, so like, you'd want to make sure you put it to a test before you went out in public with it. It's Free Talk Live. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation. Protection. Success. Incorporate your business. L-L-C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. 
Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you are invited to take control of the airwaves toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype on into the show. Username LRN.FM. And there are a lot of reasons why someone like you might want a second passport or to even renounce citizenship. Last year was an all-time record for people renouncing citizenship, and it's done all over the world. Whether it's governmental intrusion on privacy or protest against foreign policy, protecting your wealth, avoiding pointless regulations, onerous taxa uh, taxation, or as a refuge, you may want to get a second passport or even change your citizenship. Check out the St. Kitts program at PassportsForBitcoin.com, and they take Bitcoin, and it's yet another way that Bitcoins can offer you more freedom. PassportsForBitcoin.com. Still to come here tonight, of course, your calls about whatever you'd like to discuss. I know that... Uh, Daryl, you told me earlier today you wanted to talk about melting roads. Yes. And where in the United States that's happening, because it's pretty. it sounds pretty scary. Uh, we'll get into that detail here in a few moments. Your call is certainly welcome at 855-450-FREE. Some uh, crazy bureaucratic inefficiency news coming out of the Selective Service System. Yes, that's right. The Selective Service System still exists. The entire mechanism for the draft still exists it's just that the switch has been flipped it's not active at the moment back in the 1970s the early 70s uh during the nixon administration they turned off the draft basically but the draft boards are still populated the people who are the the people that you know if you were given a draft notice you would have to go and appear in front of uh under the penalty of who knows what to tell them why you can't be drafted or to, I don't know. I don't know what the process is like. Thank goodness that the draft hasn't been active. But the point being, selective service is still there. They're still sending out notices to young males age 17 that are threatening uh, young males. I don't think females are getting these notices They're yet. not. It's only men. Thank God. <laughs> and you must register between the age of 18 to 25. Or else. Or else. And there's a whole bunch of penalties. Of if you don't, then you can't get financial aid that is... You know, through like a Pell Grant or any government-backed financial aid to Correct. a college. 
And, and you, you, know, can, you cannot work for the federal government. Right. You you can't have any federal job. They also I think you it with might prison even, time. Right. And I, I think it might even uh, somehow affect any government job. So, you know, like you couldn't even go down to your local DMV and say, yeah, I want one of those jobs holding the stop, mm-hmm. slow down sign. They'll be like, um, nope, you never registered selective service, can't do it. Right, so selective service still around, and apparently somebody screwed something up somewhere, or maybe it was just software uh, that messed up, in which case I guess it would be the programmer who, bot- who botched it up. The story from Breitbart.com uh, seems like the selective service has mistakenly sent notices to more than 14,000 Pennsylvania men born between 1893 and 1897, ordering them to register for the nation's military draft. And Wait. warning... There's 14,000 people alive that were born in the 1890s? Mm, definitely not. Well, definitely you know, they're going to be waiting a long said. time to hear a response. No, it just says that it sent notices to more than 14,000 men from Pennsylvania who were born between 1893 and 1897. That doesn't say the men are alive at this point. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, it, they sent mail to dead men is what they did. Okay. And apparently somebody's still got files somewhere accessible by a computer because I doubt anyone hand you know wrote the addresses. Somebody still has address information and files accessible by a computer that goes back to the 1890s. Well, they've been doing the thing to where they've been digitizing all of the old records mm-hmm. so that they can then get rid of the stacks and stacks of paper that they sure. have in basements and who knows where. You know, you said... When you started introducing this article that it was crazy that the government's not doing their job. But I feel like this is a mistake that, you know, is not really all that surprisable for, you know, as crazy as it seems. Like, these people have been dead for, you know, who knows how, yeah, at least, you know, 50 years or whatever. But still, they're in the system. They're getting mail. Like, they'll get their hands on whatever mails they can. And if they're 200 years old, then so be it. It's uh, it's too bad the agency actually realized the error because it sure would be fun to have uh, investigators going after uh, a bunch of dead guys as far as trying to enforce the draft rules on them. Now, you don't really ever hear about somebody getting in trouble for not registering for the draft. I mean, you certainly don't hear about anybody going to jail, which is purportedly one of the things that could happen if you don't register. Right. There could be a – I think – if I'm recalling correctly – the fine was like two hundred thousand dollars or something wow. ridiculous. Like, like you know, when you're seventeen years old and you get one of these notices in the mail, it's pretty scary. I mean, that's usually the first notice, unless you've had a criminal history as a teenager. The draft notice is really the first notice that you get from the government with the, the kind of the threatening uh, demeanor about it. I guess taxes, I, I don't maybe. recall ever getting one in one. the mail. Probably because the first two things that I did on my 18th birthday were register for the draft and register to vote. I'm pretty sure they sent them out when you're 17. Maybe well, I'm I thought you didn't have to uh, get drafted until after you turned 18. Right, yeah. Um, you don't join the military until you're 18, but I, I'm pretty sure they sent it to me when I was 17. Just be like, hey, you're going to turn 18 soon. You need to have this done or else... Right, they're trying to scare you into it while you're still Correct. young and impressionable. Well, you're plenty impressionable at 18 you know, nonetheless, but... Uh, I'm sure it'd be more of a punishable crime if there was actually a draft that they were conducting where they are trying to gather up a bunch of people to go to war. You can share your thoughts with us here at 855-450-FREE. And I think you're right about that, Ellen. If you, uh, f- for instance, were to get an, a draft notice from a local draft board and not show up, eh, there's a, good, a much greater chance somebody with a badge is going to come after you. But more about the story here. The agency realized the error when it began receiving calls from bewildered relatives last week. Chuck Huey, who's 73, of Kingston, said he got a notice addressed to his late grandfather, Bert Huey, a World War I veteran who was born in 1894 and died in 1995 at age 100. So, yeah, these people would be 120 today if they were, uh, if they were still alive. I said, geez, what the hell is this about? said he was subject to heavy fines and imprisonment if he didn't sign up for the draft board. He said we were just totally dumbfounded. Huey said he tried calling the selective service but couldn't get a live person on the line. That frustrated him even more because he wanted to make sure the agency knew there had been a mistake. You just never know, he said. You don't want to mess around with the federal government. 
The glitch, it turns out, originated with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation during a transfer of nearly 400,000 records to the Selective Service. A clerk working with the state's database failed to select the century, producing records for males born between 1993 and 1997 and for those born a century earlier, according to Pennsylvania DOT <laughs> spokes bureaucrat Jan McKnight. See, when you're going through criteria to choose people to draft, I feel like the century is quite important. Well, yes. Government bureaucrats, they, they do their best. I, I'm surprised they didn't have any people born between 1793 and yeah. 1797 they may also not have the get records. these. They may not have those records. Selective Service didn't initially catch it because the state used a two-digit code to indicate the year of birth. Federal agency identified 27,218 records of men born in the 1800s. Began mailing notices to them on July on June 30th, and then got the phone calls by July 3rd. By that time, they'd already sent out over 14,000 of the notices. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Share your thoughts with about the draft. It's Free Talk Live. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Free speech is protected on the Internet, right? Not always. Government agencies try to limit free speech and commerce on the net. Luckily, when they do, the Institute for Justice is there to defend your First Amendment right to free speech. IJ helped set the first federal precedent for internet free speech in 1999, and ever since has worked to prevent unconstitutional roadblocks in cyberspace. Visit our website today at ij.org. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. 
Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want by dialing toll free 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Big, big news coming out of the Massachusetts Supreme Court here for cannabis users. We can share that with you. Plus, Daryl will be telling us about molten roads. I don't know if they're actually molten, but they're melting. Don't they have to be molten to be melting? I don't know. We'll find out more. Yeah, roads that are melting. Where is this happening? Daryl's got that story, and Ellen joining us here as well tonight from ALP. You can check out more of her at alpshow.com. Or facebook.com slash ALP podcast. Yes, and it's a, a weekly podcast that you can go and grab up. Have you guys been uh, you know, back at it since Porkfest? Well, it hasn't been so weekly lately oh, because no. both Allie and I are going through a lot of life changes right now. So yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to... Cetera. Yeah, it's hard to find time to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But Especially, it will be coming back? Um, yes, okay. we're, we're planning on starting again this week. But um, I just finished editing the Porkfest Fest. Uh, ah. episode so that should be up on the website within the next 24 hours great but uh as to when we're recording next i would hope it's in the next week it's just it's really hard to tell especially when we're both really busy and you know so many things are changing but we definitely are excited to jump back into it excellent alpshow.com for more of ellen as we go to your calls and thoughts paul is in nashville tennessee you're on free talk live hey paul Paul and Nashville. Hello, Ian, Darren, and Ellen. It's Daryl, um, but go ahead. Hello? Can hey. you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. You're on the air. Can you hey, hear um, us? The last few episodes that... Yes, I can hear okay, you. Okay, great. The uh, the right. last few episodes that you that you have, have held was very interesting, to say the least, about the, uh, the non-aggression principle. Hmm, okay. And what I'd like to, to get your take on is according to the non-aggression principle, um, the aggression is basically illegitimate. So my concern, because remember how you guys were talking about the windmill and how it was annoying? Yeah, this was a guy in Minnesota who had uh, built a windmill on the back of his in the backyard by the by Lake Minnetonka, I think it was. And some neighbors were upset. They claim the windmill is noisy. They claim that it flashes the sunlight in their windows or something like that. And so what about it? Well, um, my concern where, where I would like to get your opinion is that the non-aggression principle is, in, in our opinion, illegitimate. But let's say that you are a— um, Who says uh, it's illegitimate? I'm a sorry. A fence company, and you— who says the non-aggression? Well, according uh, to the definition of the of the non-aggression principle, you're claiming that the non-aggression principle, which is the idea that you shouldn't aggress against other people <clears throat> at all, um, is uh, you're you're saying that there are some people who would look at the non-aggression principle and then look at this windmill and claim that the windmill is aggression. No, no, no. I, I was all just right, saying that the the windmill episode. Yeah, and I, let me go ahead and clarify. The windmill episode was very interesting, and and I loved how the discussion started talking about the non-aggression principle, and and the non-aggression principle defines that ag- ag- aggression is illegitimate. So my my question to you and to your your fellow host there is, it, let's hypothetically say that somebody owes you money. Like in today's society, if you're a fence company and you put a fence up on someone's property. And they fail to pay you. You can put a mechanics lien to try to to recoup the funds that they they owe you. Mm-hmm. What happens if they don't pay you? What is, is do you have a solution to that? Well, it's an interesting question. So, um, I, it really doesn't factor into the non-aggression principle. I don't think because if you have done some sort of work for someone, presumably you did it under an agreement that there was a 
you know, a contract that you would provide such and such a service in return for such and such a price. And, you know, if somebody blows the deal and they don't either don't provide the service or they don't pay the price, if one of the two parties is in default, uh, then you'd have a, you know, you'd have an actionable case in, in court or in arbitration. Uh, you know, certainly people who believe in the ideas of liberty would say that we don't like the idea of uh, a one-size-fits-all government court system, but we would still have arbitrators to which you would likely have agreed to an arbitrator in the contract. Uh, you, you know, If you're covering all your bases here, if you're just on a handshake with somebody, then you're going to have to figure out an arbitration deal later on, and then hopefully that other person is honorable and uh, will come to arbitration and you know, you guys will agree to whatever the decision is of the arbitrator, and the arbitrator will decide who's in the wrong and who owes but, who but what. But that's, that's where my question goes. That's where my question goes, Ian. Because what if the party, want, the party that owes the the funds, decides to renege on the agreement? Sure. Well, and does not, even though they they go through that process and they decide not to pay. Does aggression become warranted at that point? Well, it depends. Um, first of all, it wouldn't be aggression because you'd be making yourself whole on a, a broken contract. But you would want the you know you'd want to play it out through arbitration before you go and try to you know repossess a car or something like that. I think um, with arbitration, this is talked about in the book, The Market for Liberty, which I think is an excellent book and you can get for free in audiobook form over at books.freetalklive.com. Uh, but the idea would be that in a free society or in a freer society, um, reputation would be more important. Now, we still have reputation today. People, you know, if you shop on eBay, for instance, uh, the sellers have reputation ratings there. On the Silk Road, uh, the sellers have reputation As ratings. do buyers. That's true. And uh, so reputation matters. And if we can have a system that's created by the marketplace that can help uh, rate people on their reputation – then uh, you would have gotten into an agreement with somebody. Hopefully, you would have checked their reputation first to see if they, you know, were were good. Do um, we also have credit scores today, which to some extent is a reputation rating system? It's right, imperfect but, though. But not really, because if you never get a credit card and you always pay your light bill and you know whatever other utilities that you have, if you always pay them on time and you never take out a loan, then you are going to have a very low credit score. Mm, yeah. I, like I said, it's an imperfect system, but it's still, to some extent, a system. And so, uh, yeah, so you, know, you have a dispute with somebody. If you don't have a pre-existing agreement with them, then uh, you know, you'd know you have to figure out a way to motivate them to go, and hopefully you could motivate them to go to arbitration by the virtue of the fact that if they don't go, the ruling will be against them and or could be against them. And they wouldn't be able to put any input into it, and that could mar their credit rating or that could mar their reputation rating. So people would want to protect their reputation is the idea. Most people. Right. And you would want to get like just compensation True, for whatever uh, you sold them or whatever service you provided. But um, like it wouldn't be fair to you to just show up to their house and like take their car. But – I imagine that you would probably Unless that was agreed to in the contract. If hey, it, if if it was, the job, then I yeah. Get to take but, your car. but I imagine that um you know, that's well, probably mean, not agreed upon beforehand, seeing as this person's not agreeing to pay anyway. So like you'd you'd have to, you know, hound them to some degree, like if you wanted to take responsibility and get your money back somehow. And mm -hmm. like the unspoken thing, if you borrow money from the mafia, if you don't pay them back, they break your kneecaps. That doesn't really make the mob boss whole. It doesn't no, it make doesn't. the guy that installed the fence whole. He's still out his time, his labor, his supplies, right. whatever money he paid his workers. So, you know, like breaking the kneecap of the person that owes you money, thus preventing them from doing labor in order to make money to compensate you, doesn't really make sense. Go ahead, Paul. Okay. But but outside of all of that, let's just say that everything is agreed upon and everything is addressed in the contractual agreement, and the person still does not want to uh, turn over those funds or that property. Because like in car loans today, you agree upon that the car will be repossessed. So that's yep. something that is forethought in those agreements. So my question to you is, does aggression ever become warranted? Or legitimate to make yourself whole. Well, I don't consider it to be aggression if you've already been defrauded, right? If you're making yourself whole, then you're just making yourself whole. Aggression is where you take somebody who's an innocent party and you attack them in some way. You harm them, you threaten them, 
Uh, in this case, you have an agreement that says that you should have had something done. It didn't get done or didn't get done right. You have a dispute. And uh, ideally, you should go to an arbitrator. But, you know, if you want to, you know, if, it's, if it's within the agreement that you can go and repossess something, then you're fully within your rights to go and do that. And that's not an aggression. That's just the agreement. Thanks, Paul. More coming up on Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair pain-free and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm -hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike (laughs) (laughs) try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 800-952-5760 that's 800-952-5760 800-952-5760 I just heard the best sales pitch I've heard in a long time on an airplane. The flight attendant announced, if you paid more than $75 for your round trip ticket, you overpaid. This is brilliant because everybody on the flight paid more. And I was struck by how all the road warriors stopped typing and reading and working and looked up. The announcement invited us to apply for the airline's credit card. And the sign-up bonus? Enough frequent flyer miles for a free round trip. Talk about turning lemons into lemonade. With some banks offering free credit cards, $75 is an outrage for an annual fee, but a bargain for airline tickets. For more tips on communicating more effectively, hit survivalspeech.com, where you can see how I got the CEO of another major airline to shower me with freebies. I'm Holland Cook. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything that you want right here toll free. Coming up. Rick Perry. He's uh, the governor guy down in Texas. No relation. Yeah, right, Daryl Perry in the studio here tonight. 
Uh, he's got a few nasty things to say about immigration. We'll get to that here in a moment or two or whenever. Your calls come first, though. You can dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE and join us on Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. So feel free to ring us up in the way that you prefer. Also, some really great news coming up about the Massachusetts Supreme Court and their opinion about cannabis-related searching of your vehicle. Plus, Daryl is going to be telling us about melting roads, where that is happening. Coffee.freetalklive.com is where you can get a free pound, the best of the best coffee from BuzzBox. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. And BuzzBox is competitively priced with other high-end coffees, and they do something special that those other guys just don't do. They've set up a program that allows people around the world to buy into their coffee co-op, and that can help them make a better life for themselves. Plus, they are also financing microloans because of you. When Free Talk Live listeners go to coffee.freetalklive.com, every 10 listeners allows us and BuzzBox to finance a, a one microloan through World Vision. So you can help change people's lives by giving people in poverty an opportunity to make their lives better. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Get your first pound for free. You just pay the shipping cost, and it will be sent right to you. Plus, you can cancel your subscription at any time. Again, that's coffee.freetalklive.com. Uh, let's talk about these molten roads, Daryl Perry. I'm fascinated by this. So, apparently, in Yellowstone Park... There are roads made of asphalt that have turned into soup, and Whoa. the gravel roads have turned into oatmeal, according to parks. Oh, the the no. park spokesman Dan Huddle. Does this have something to do with the super volcano that's in Yellowstone? I maybe don't think it's the sunlight that's melting. Oh the my roads. gosh, this is terrifying. So the article here from the Huffington Post. Wait a minute, you don't live anywhere near Yellowstone. It We'll doesn't matter. Okay. Hold if on, I've seen the Discovery Channel thing. If Yellowstone blows up, all of America goes away. Pretty much seventy like, percent of the U.S. On, is going to be covered yeah. by volcanic ash. Life in That's the how massive Western this volcano hemisphere is. goes away. I mean, we'll be Something fine because we're on the sea coast. Something about polar bears and <laughs> penguins might not be alive anymore no i mean we'll be well. fine because we're on the sea coast and i remember when i lived in michigan that you know michigan was going to be fine too but pretty much like most of the u.s if this super volcano explodes within the next you know i i right, don't care but, if it explodes after i'm dead because i'll be dead but with but, the way the gulf stream is a lot of that ash is going to wind up here yeah that's true and that would block out the sun, right? Yes. Which would make it very difficult to grow things. Yes. Uh, would make it, uh, you know, uncomfortably cold, perhaps in some ways. I, I could, don't know. I'm could no lead science, to scientist. another ice age, or at least, you know, a, a cold era. So, so the article scary. here from Huffington Post says a popular road through Yellowstone National Park was shut down on Thursday when the asphalt started to melt. The park says extreme Man. heat from thermal areas is causing hot oil to bubble to the surface of Firehole Lake Drive, a scenic 3.3-mile loop that runs past Great Fountain Geyser, White Dome Geyser, and Firehole Lake. They have a photo embedded, and, you know, it's one of these things to where... It looks sort of like when they put down the fresh layer of tar or asphalt on mm -hmm. the road, only there's a bunch of potholes in the middle of it, so it looks as though they didn't fill in the potholes. They just put down right. a fresh layer and sort of smooth most of it out. The article continues. It says, that same thermal heat melting the roads is what gives the park its famous geysers, hot springs, mud pots, and fumaroles, but I am not sure what a fumarole is. It says, but for the moment, some of these natural wonders will be off limits as officials ask both motorists and hikers to avoid the area. Al Nash, another Yellowstone spokesman, told the Associated Press, there are plenty of other great places to see thermal features. I would not risk personal injury to see these during the temporary closure. The park says the road will remain closed for several days, but no reopening date has yet been announced. I don't know if they can announce one. Like, if, if this is just going to get worse, 
there's no there's no indication that it's just going to go away. Right. So the article doesn't really say what they think is causing this. It doesn't say if this is something that has happened in the past. I don't recall ever hearing about roads melting anywhere. I am actually looking right now to see if I can find out what the melting point of asphalt is, and I haven't really been able to nail that down. There's one uh, article at Answers.com that says softening point ranges from 30 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius, which is a pretty big range. So either way, I mean, anybody who's ever stepped on a a hot road with a bare foot knows how bad the average uh, asphalt road could right. be un- in the sunlight. I can't imagine how hot these roads are. I mean, this has got to be really. I don't know. At the beginning awful. of the article, didn't it say something about like superheated oils or something like that coming up out of the ground? Uh, yeah, the heat from the thermal areas is causing oil to come up through the ground, possibly even through the road. It wow. it doesn't really say. But this really brings about, in my mind, it brings about a question about better ways to build the roads. Mm. Instead of using asphalt, is there something else that could be used? Leave it to the libertarians to argue about how to build the roads when the (laughs) world is going to be set on fire in moments. My first thought about this is that we should all (laughs) become preppers. You know, people think they're paranoid and crazy, but when you start looking at all the natural disasters that could possibly happen, like... It makes me want to build an underground shelter. Mm. But that's where the heat is coming from, is underground. <laughs> Not you will boil out here. alive, and you don't have much meat on you, so, you know, like... I don't there... live by a super volcano. No, thank goodness. I don't that's, think there are any volcanoes. you know, thousands there. of miles away. Hey, I want to go to John. He's in Minnesota listening to WNMT. John, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Daryl, and Ellen. John? Yeah. Uh, anyway, I have an article here. It's August... 2009 for National Geographic, Mm -hmm. and they go into detail about that uh, Yellowstone, uh, you know, volcano that's underground. Yeah. And it's about 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. So how much of the world goes away if this thing blows up? Oh, I'm not a prophet, so I can't tell you, but (laughs) according to this article... It, it's going to uh, make the whole world dark for a while because it's going to get up in the atmosphere and uh, put put out uh, dust and ashes for for a while. Oh goodness! Yeah, I want to like, see a good uh, scare article about how bad it would actually be. See, I don't. I think something like this calls yeah, well, for human ingenuity, is, yeah. and we need to start developing ways to like filter ash out of the air. Yeah, a whole new know, business man. could arise out of this. Or, Let's look at the positive aspects. Ooh, hold on. I, I've got a brilliant idea. We need to find a way to encourage people to f- figure out some kind of way to relieve the pressure from the volcano so that it doesn't explode. It's not like it's a boil that's developing on someone's skin and you can just lance it and it'll be fine. <laughs> I know, but we need to figure out a way to lance the volcano. John, what were you saying? Go ahead. Yeah, it is. It is like a boil. It, it is like a boil inside the. It's. Uh, it doesn't go all the way to the center, according to this article. I mean, they're just guessing with their electronic devices or however they come up with this. But uh, it goes down uh, through the crust, but not into the center where it's really supposed to be hot. You know. Right. Thanks, but, so um, they're using it's something to be concerned about, it, but there's nothing you can do about it. No, I mean, there's uh, not much you can do about it. Hey, you thanks, can, John, you could for wear your damp clothes, and then the ashes would stick to you, and you would you could wash them wash them off. But I don't know how to get it out of the air. Yeah, that sounds really bad. Thanks for the call tonight, John. It just would go away over time. The question is, how long would it uh, be up, up suspended in the air for? That's a good question, but I found the article from the Associated Press that was referenced in the original article. And according to this article, the thermal features often often damage roads in Yellowstone. Oh, really? Often damage boardwalks. So this is nothing new then. Uh, steaming potholes in asphalt roads and parking lots are often marked off by traffic cones so. and is a fairly common curiosity. Interesting. So what you're saying is 
This Doomsday sounds, may not be nigh. Yeah, it sounds pretty scary, but maybe this is pretty typical. That's what it seems like. Don't walk around barefoot when you visit Yellowstone. Is what walk around like. in your human feet, because what? the bears won't be happy if you uh, take their <laughs> feet. 855 450 free. Hour number two coming up next. You take control here on Free Talk Live. If something in this facility breaks, bends, or bursts, Granger's got our back. 20 cases of disc springs from Granger.com, new rotary encoder ordered on Granger's mobile app, a dozen splash goggles from the local Granger branch. What more could you want in life? Granger has over 1 million products for all our facilities' needs. 1 million. That's a one followed by six zeros, kid. Everything we need whenever we need it. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, July 11th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,338, silver opened at $2,145, and Bitcoin is trading at $628. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One tera hash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com or call them up 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. In the news, on Wednesday, the alleged creator of the online marketplace Silk Road was denied his bid for dismissal of a federal indictment, which accuses him of laundering money and being involved with illegal drug trade. Ross Ulbricht denied charges of money laundering, stating that bitcoins are not money. U.S. District Judge Catherine Forrest disagreed, stating that money could be laundered using the online cryptocurrency. Judge Forrest said Ulbricht played the role of intermediary between website users, acting as a sort of godfather. Ulbricht is facing four counts of conspiracy, including engaging in a continuing criminal enterprise, which carries a maximum sentence of life behind bars. The trial is scheduled to begin November 3rd. A study by the Crime Prevention Research Center found that a little over 11 million Americans now have permits to carry concealed weapons, up from 4.5 million in 2007. According to the report, violent crime rates dropped by 22 percent while permits to carry rose 146 percent. Increasing gun ownership, litigation, and new state laws have all contributed to the rise in concealed carry permits, reported KSAZ. Currently, Florida has the most active concealed carry permits, with Texas coming in second. Wichita Falls, Texas has become the second city in the state to recycle treated wastewater, 
to help bolster drinking supplies, according to CBS News. Located near the Oklahoma border, the city began reusing millions of gallons of water at the River Road Waste Treatment Plant that's been purified to meet government standards. The recycled water is sent through a 12-mile pipeline into the Cypress Water Treatment Plant, where it receives additional purification. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY, and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free. Online at affordablesound.com, or call them up, 512-459-5253. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, July 11th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Former NSA contractor Edward Snowden officially filed a petition to extend his asylum in Russia for another year, as reported by the Russian Times. The Federal Migration Service is responsible for deciding whether Snowden will be allowed to stay, but has not yet commented on the application. While Snowden has planned to take asylum in Cuba, he ended up in Moscow on the evening of June 24, 2013, from Hong Kong, after he was unable to make his destination without being apprehended by U.S. authorities. The whistleblower told NBC in an interview that he would like to return to America if it were an option, but is afraid he would be unfairly convicted of espionage. Former New Orleans Mayor Ray Nagin was sentenced Wednesday to 10 years in prison for bribery, money laundering, and other corruption during his two terms as mayor which included the chaotic years following the Hurricane Katrina disaster of 2005. Nagin was convicted of accepting hundreds of thousands of dollars from businessmen who wanted work from the city or the mayor's support for various projects. Among the bribes, Nagin accepted free vacations, cash, and truckloads of free granite for his family business. The former mayor is required to report to federal prison in Oakdale, Louisiana in September. The U.S. Department of Agriculture granted a special permit allowing Australian researchers to transport genetically modified bananas to the Midwestern state of Iowa. Scientists in Brisbane genetically altered the bananas to contain more beta-carotene, which converts to vitamin A, and are paying volunteers in Iowa $900 each to test whether or not they work. The bananas, commonly used for cooking in Africa, are intended for the people of Uganda to help solve vitamin A deficiency in the country. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock Central Time at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Inc., precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977, online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, July 11, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. It's now been seven days since a group of hikers went missing in Maine's Acadia National Park, but rescue crews there are still holding out hope of finding them alive. Autistic reporter Michael Falk is on the scene there. Michael. Hello, Brooke. My socks got wet. That cameraman gave me new socks. I am fine. That's good, Michael, but what's the situation there? The names of the hikers are Casey Allman, Brian Emery, Ashley Thorson. The hikers were last seen 174 hours ago. Since then, three very big storms have hit here. There's a 1.24% chance that all of the hikers are alive. Why are you looking for the hikers? Well, we're still hopeful that we might be able to find them. There's been a break in the weather, so we're hoping that. Over the past seven days, the average high temperature has been 21 degrees Fahrenheit. Over the past seven days, the average low temperature has been six degrees Fahrenheit. Right. So we did another sweep of the park from the air, but we didn't see anything. Without shelter, the human body can withstand temperatures this cold for a maximum of three hours. Is there shelter in the forest for the hikers? Not that we know of. They are frozen. Well, we like Shh. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want. Toll free number 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And we invite you to join us on Skype as well. Our uh, Skype username is lrn.fm. Just send your contact request on over and it will be approved. Uh, and that's an easy thing to do. And then you can get on the air with us and sound almost like you're in the studio with us because Skype usually sounds a lot better. Than your cell phone. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. And Daryl. And Ellen. All right. So, uh, Ellen, you had said that you were actually listening to regular talk radio with kind of conserva clone talk show hosts as you were driving here today. Yep. I was driving to Keene from Manchester, and it was about 6 o'clock, 
and I switched on the radio, and I was just flipping through, and then I started hearing this man shouting angrily, and I was like, oh, this sounds interesting. Um, I think it was 107.5, and I say that's what it was. Here in Keene, that would be the local talk station WKBK. It's the same station that airs Free Talk Live on Saturday nights, but does not air us during the week. They air a show by the name of Todd Schnitt. Todd Schnitt is um, one of the worst radio pukers in the business. Uh, Radio puking is a sort of style of speaking that is over-enunciated and heavy. I don't know how really to describe it. Um, Like Radio Guy, this is Radio Guy. The best way to uh, describe puking is to actually do some puking. And you can see it's, you know, I've adjusted my voice and it sounds very strange. Anyway, this guy does that all the time. He sounds like that, he's got that puker voice. It's kind of the, I don't know if you would call it like the classic radio voice, but this, this over and It's the stereotypical, ridiculous. if you're watching a television yeah. show and they're making Gotta make fun, it sound interesting. If they're making fun of one of these morning shows. And Family Guy does a great job of doing that where they have the... You know, overly enunciated yeah. radio puker morning show. So Todd Schnitz, one of the worst I've ever heard, maybe the worst uh, of the radio pukers. And I'm more familiar with him than the average talk show host because he actually started in Tampa, where is very near where I lived in Florida. Uh, he was actually a morning show disc jockey, shock jock kind of guy uh, for a long time. His name was MJ in the morning back then. I don't know what the guy's real name is. I mean, he's MJ on this one station, and then he got his talk show gig where he's Todd Schnitt. Schnitt Show is the name of his show. Uh, anyway, I got to uh, actually be in a debate with Todd Schnitt along, about probably two or three years ago now at this point at the Talkers Convention. Actually, I guess it was yeah three years ago. Um, at the Talkers Convention, they have this thing called the Radio Rumble or the talk radio rumble where, where they'll invite like eight or nine different talk show hosts from the from the business all to the same stage and we all sit up there and talk about the issues and so if you look for i don't know i know i posted it i think on our publicity page at publicity.freetalklive.com so if you'd like to see me and todd schnitt in the same debate uh it's pretty entertaining i would recommend you check that out and apparently according to wikipedia his actual name is todd schnitt, todd schnitt. okay so you were listening to todd schnitt and i'm sorry that you had <laughs> that you actually had to listen to him well um, you know i i chose to listen to it not because i agree with anything that he says really yeah, sure but he certainly brings up some interesting points and He's I like, not a bad talk show host. No, and I I like listening and just like coming up with arguments in my head as he's talking. Like, you know, if I could debate with this person, what would I actually mm-hmm. say? Um, but today in particular, he was uh, ranting about how we need stricter border patrol and we need to keep the illegal aliens out oh of our, our sovereign country that needs stronger borders. And uh, he's very upset about one specific issue, which was that if you are an illegal alien, you can get through the TSA and fly on commercial airlines with no source of identification besides a notice to appear for a court date. And he was very upset because these are printed on regular printer paper. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the information on there is not verifiable at all, so it would be easy to fake. And um, the point that the one thing that I did agree with him on, though, was that. I think it's it's kind of unfair because these immigrants are getting treated with more respect hold on, hold on. than the rest You're of the in U.S. citizens. I, I used to work for an airline, so I can tell you that he's partially correct that someone can get on an airplane without identification. What he's not telling you is that, Ellen, you could get on an airplane without identification. Ian, you exactly. could get on without identification. I could get on without There's identification. There's no special set of circumstances the just for The thing that happens if you don't have identification is that you get the extra blue glove love. He left that part out. Yeah. Well, I'm wondering, are these illegal aliens going through commercial airlines having to get groped by the TSA? Because I think that everybody was, without identification I'm gets pretty the sure extra that's, pat down. That's what he was most upset about was that they didn't have to go through the TSA line. I don't believe that for a moment. I don't. See, be- I don't know. I if used that's to work for either. an airline, and I can tell you, he's full of it. Yeah. First of all, this sounds to me like, and it's interesting because I was actually it was funny last night. I was listening to Cody O'Connor uh, do his show off the air live on LRN.FM, and I just thought. 
Hmm. Uh, Cody works for a talk radio station, WGAN, out in Portland, and he's the morning show producer. So he screens calls and sets up guests mm-hmm. and things like that. And so I, I was just wondering, you know, like, what are the Conserva Clone talk show hosts talking about today? I should call Cody and ask. I didn't end up calling and asking, but I was just curious because I don't ever listen to these guys' shows. If I ever hear Todd Schnitt, it's because I was napping and getting up before the show and my <laughs> alarm clock went off. So that's the only time I'll really ever spend any time listening to these guys. So I don't ever know what they're talking about. And when you had said you weren't sure, you were trying to tell me and Daryl off the air about what you were right. Listening it wasn't to. actually Todd Schnitt. It was. Uh, Perry, well, I you remember heard hearing the name that name. Perry yes, from and you weren't sure who you thought maybe the talk show host was Perry, and so when you were going to check the radio station you were listening to, I went on uh, Drudge Report, and one of the top headlines there is Governor Perry. We need to secure the border with a show of force. But just to go back real briefly to what the uh, uh, the Conserva Clone talk show hosts are talking about, not a surprise, immigration's one of them. It's either immigration or terrorism, it seems like, with these guys. Terrorism now is brought up every time. Them. No, I know. Terrorism is brought up every time I listen to the show. Mm. The same names, too, like Al-Qaeda or ISIS. Right, and of course, the Democrats aren't doing a good enough job at uh, fighting terrorism, so we need more police state, more border patrol, more uh, bigger budgets, etc. Direct so- quote from President Obama that I heard on this radio show. I'm getting tired of doing all this stuff by myself. Meaning What? Yeah, that just doesn't even make sense. Well, apparently he's tired of uh, the other team not doing enough to help him enforce these laws, and he's tired of doing all this quote-unquote stuff by himself. So I, I saw a picture floating around on Facebook, and luckily it was only being shared by one of my Facebook friends as, look at what somebody posted, you know, like somebody on my friends list mm-hmm. posted. It was a picture supposedly taken near the U.S.-Mexican border, supposedly of a bunch of people crossing the border illegally with the caption, can you spot the terrorist? That's the plan. Disgusting. So what they're claiming is that, you know, terrorists are sneaking into Mexico and then coming across in packs along with people of Mexican descent. I'd like to know where the terrorists are. I mean, if it's if there have been so many terrorists that have been infiltrating the United States over the last decade, where is all the terrorism? I don't I mean, know. On. They're probably chop, chop, amassing chop. somewhere and like planning something. Well, that's what they I don't want know. you to believe. And and there's a lot of paranoia and misinformation out there. Um, and Todd Schnitt, this other talk show host who was you know playing Rick Perry clips, etc. The um, you know the viewpoint is essentially that oh well you've got these terrorists they're coming into the country something must be done the other the other side whoever they are isn't doing enough we need more government we need more control. And uh, and then they give you this example of, oh, well, see, there's not even enough control. Look at the airports. There's these immigrants. They don't even have to show ID. The thing they don't probably even know is that you don't have to show ID. No one has to show ID, as Daryl was pointing out. But odds are good everybody who's talking about this on the radio has no idea about that. They've no. just seen the headline that says, ah, immigrants were seen getting through TSA security with no identification. And that's the news story. And they take that story and they bring it on the air and they talk about that as though it's true only for immigrants. Well, it's good to know. They just don't know what they're talking about. But I've got the Governor Perry story here with whatever it was he actually said. We'll share that with you coming up here in moments. He says there needs to be a show of force on the border. It's Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. 
Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth slide into a recession or at worst depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. It's written in legalese. If you don't have training in reading that crap, it might as well be a foreign language. Mm. And as you pointed out, it doesn't matter if you can read it. I thought I had them dead to rights. And <laughs> these bureaucrats, <laughs> they just, they just like, no, we do whatever we want here at the zoning board. Yeah, that's right. And you'll kiss our butts. Peon. Surf. You'll, <laughs> you'll slave. Do, you'll do what we say. Yeah. Why label them citizens? Oh. Why not just call it what it is? You're a serf. You're a slave. Well, We're yeah. the freest slaves in the world. Hey, S- if you don't lack this slavery, you should go to some other country and be a slave. At least we got cell phones and TV and beer. <laughs> Do have beer. Our masters let us live a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice life. They let us keep 40% of what we earn. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills... Would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want toll-free here, 855-450-FREE, talking about immigration paranoia. People, uh, they love to have a boogeyman out there, and of course the state loves to have a boogeyman out there to scare people with, because if people aren't scared, then they won't think they'll need the state around to protect them from whatever the boogeyman of the moment happens to be. In the past, it's been uh, communists, drug dealers, terrorists, that's still one of the current boogeymen. And now uh, immigrants. So we're going to continue here with uh, Governor Rick Perry and his comments. Uh, apparently he wants more force. As there's not enough force being used against these poor people who are trying to make a better life for themselves. Scooping and them up, destroying their families and deporting them. You really have to watch out for the communist immigrant drug dealers. Communist immigrant terrorist drug dealers who wear yes. diapers. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. Coming up, the North American Bitcoin Conference. Unfortunately, due to uh, some behind-the-scenes mis- mistakes, I guess you could call it that, uh, Free Talk Live will not be in attendance there. There was some miscommunication that happened about the, the rate of what uh, we needed to get out there. 
North American Bitcoin Conference will go on without us, however, and uh, Jeff Berwick will be there, Charlie Lee of Litecoin, Kathy Reisenwitz from Young Voices, Tony Gallippi of BitPay, Christina Golrick of Cloud Hashing, and more. Go uh, July 19th and 20th, btcchicago.com. You can go and pay in Bitcoin there at btcchicago.com. We can take your calls about what you want. We'll get to the Governor Perry thing here in a moment. Tim is on the line listening in Naples, Florida. Tim, you're on Free Talk Live. Tim. Hi, hey guys. Hey, you're on the air. Hey, uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to tell you about a new cryptocurrency I found called Gorilla Coin. It's uh, <clears throat> actually, if you keep it in your wallet, it bears interest, which I thought was pretty cool. I've got about huh. seven thousand Gorilla Coin in my wallet right now, and, um, and basically, it's it's proof of stake, and it's also proof of strength, which is a term I haven't heard. Uh, before. I don't well, these, think term, the these terms you're using are uh, techno jargon that have to do with how the the coins in this case are mined. You're mentioning an altcoin called, you said, Gorilla Coin. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of these altcoins, which really, for me, it's hard to get excited about any altcoins whatsoever. Um, so what you're saying is you're excited about the Gorilla Coin because it's got uh, interest built into it and you feel like it's secure. You know, I, I'm I'm not too technically minded myself, uh, so I, I don't really know about the security. Um, somebody could look at the white paper, but what I like is it's got a, a variable interest, a variable compounding interest rate. You keep it in your wallet; it's one to eight percent, and that is depending that seems like on a lot of strength. interest. So I mean. How fast are these coins inflating if they're able to pay 1% to 8% to everybody who's holding the coins? I believe it's a maximum. I could be wrong about this. I think it's 15 million coins. I don't know the exact number. Now, the, the percentage is yearly. And uh -huh. um, so, for example, yesterday it was 5.2%. Today it's 45 Tomorrow it could be 1%. Depending so on you're how saying at the end of the connected. year they're going to average that out and then make payouts to everybody that's been holding on to the Gorilla Coin? I don't understand. How would they determine? Um, you know, again, I, I obviously never heard of this before. How would they determine if you get paid interest over a year what amount you get paid? Do you get paid? Do they average the amount of uh, Gorilla Coin you had in your wallet over the years years time? I mean, if you start the year with a hundred thousand Gorilla Coin and then you end the year with 20,000 Gorilla Coin, do you get paid the interest on the 20,000? How does that work? Not to mention, who's this they that's paying out okay. the interest? I would imagine it's the uh, people oh, who it's, created it's the... It's actually daily. I'm sorry. You said it's daily or yearly? I'm confused. <clears throat> so the, the percentage is based uh, more annually, and I don't know the exact formula. I've been getting payouts daily on... I, I deposited two amounts... Uh, to one of those addresses, so I'll actually get two uh, two interest payments daily. They're not the full four percent, but they're basically. Um, so you take the total amount of coins times uh, the four percent divide, say it's four percent, and then divide by three hundred and sixty-five. It's a rough estimate, and I don't think that's the exact formula. So um, because because the payout I get is a little bit. Because it's proof of stake instead of proof of power. This is the mining type. Right. It, it, it's a mining type. It means that anybody that is running the client. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, Ian, you're running the Bitcoin client, but you are not mining Bitcoin. Correct. If you had the Gorilla Coin client mm -hmm. or the NXT client, then you would be doing what they call forging which means that you are running the blockchain, mm -hmm. which is the ledger that has all of the transactions. And what they do is instead of giving mining fees to the miners, which is what they do with blockchain, yeah. they split up the uh, forging fees. So there's still a transaction fee that you pay. Mm -hmm. For instance, I recently got into NXT. And there's a, another altcoin. It is. And there's a one NXT uh, transaction fee. So mm -hmm. no matter how many you send or how few you send, there's a one coin fee. 
So that fee gets... That sounds like it could get very expensive over time. If It could. Yeah. Uh, but, of course, you know, that could wind up being reduced yeah. by the people that do the coding. But that fee gets split up based on a formula, depending on how many coins you have in the wallet that's running the client. Mm -hmm. Then you wind up getting basically a miner's fee, but they're calling it something different. Uh -huh, a forging and, fee. And in this case, instead of them calling it a forging fee, mm -hmm. they're calling it interest. Got it. So basically everybody who's in the system of the gorilla coin that you're talking about here, and by the way, it's actually spelled gorilla like a gorilla warfare, not a gorilla. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, gorilla. Right, but uh, they actually have a picture of the ooh, ooh, yeah. ah, oh, gorilla. <laughs> I haven't been to the website yet. I, I'm yeah, looking at the website right now. So, Tim, you're saying that um, everyone who has these Gorilla Coins will be getting paid interest. So, basically, the inflation is being passed along to all the holders, and then eventually it's going to stop and no one will get paid interest? I'm confused. No, my, my I've, understanding... I've asked myself that. I don't, I don't know what happens at that point. Mm -hmm. my, my understanding, based on you know, like my quick look over of their website and knowing how NXT works is it seems to me that what they're calling interest is actually the forger's fee. And they call the people running the client forgers, not miners, because you're not uh -huh. using your computing power to you know break some code to create a block. I see. Okay. But I still just, it's confusing to me if everybody who's holding on to these coins is getting paid interest. How do it's not actually interest. R you're getting a share of the transaction fees. Yeah. Just for they're owning just the calling coins? it interest. But everyone's getting shares in the transaction fees, so doesn't that just inflate the currency and doesn't really do no. anything for you? I must be missing something here. Uh, the toll-free number is 8 bit. This is why I'm so, so tired of these altcoins. Tim, if you got more to say, you can hang on. We'll bring it back here. I'll try to understand this thing. Maybe I'll look into it in, in a few moments. Uh, let's see. There are hundreds of altcoins these days, almost 400 of them. It's Free Talk Live. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday.
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. All you have to do is dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Maybe you want to talk about... A bizarre cryptocurrency, uh, which, you know, who knows? Maybe Gorilla Coin will be the next Bitcoin. Seems unlikely, considering there are over 400. If you go to coinmarketcap.com, there are over 400 what are called altcoins, 404 of them on the list right now as we speak. Uh, I remember last year looking at the list, there were 200 uh, last year, like toward the end of 2013. So these altcoins just keep on popping up and adding more alternatives to Bitcoin. Bitcoin, of course, you know, by far is the number one cryptocurrency. It was the first to market. It's the one that actually is accepted uh, in a lot of places. You know, these other ones, Gorilla Coin. What can you buy with Gorilla Coin? Well, I just feel like if people are trading with alternative currencies, like especially in comparison to something like Federal Reserve notes, like that's better than nothing. Well, it is. Uh, I mean, I mean, great. If you support one of these altcoins, then by all means, pour some money into it and try to pimp it out to everybody out there. But it's it's a really competitive marketplace to try to get people to put money into altcoins, especially when you've got some of the other altcoins, which definitely are more worthy of attention. I mean, Litecoin is second to Bitcoin, but by a long distance. And then you've got Dogecoin, which is very popular, but still not really in use in a lot of ways. Dogecoin's number seven on the list. I invested in something called cap. Court Coin. Court Coin. Quark. Quark. Q U A R K. Is that did. named after the Star Trek Wars guy? It's named after quarks, which are subatomic particles. I hope you didn't invest too much into Quark Coin. How'd that work <laughs> out for you? Well, I don't know. I only put a few dollars into it, so okay. it's not a big deal. I just wanted to see where it went, really, because it wasn't popular when I first started looking into it. But and how long ago was that? Um, I'd say it's about, I don't know, seven months ago. And how's it doing now? I haven't really checked on it lately, but <laughs> from what I've seen, uh, it has gone up like a few like micro cents. So where do you get Bitcoins, Dogecoin, and Litecoin, as well as now Blackcoin and Darkcoin? Unfortunately, no Gorilla Coin available at ExpressCoin.com. They've got some of the more popular alternative currencies, but most importantly, they've got Bitcoins, and they make it easy. So easy, so fast. Go and check it out at ExpressCoin.com and get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer, and now cash deposit. You can go to a bank um, not just any old bank. It has to be a, a service, like a credit union. It has to be a credit union with uh, what's called shared branching. You can go in there with the right deposit info and deposit cash, and then usually in about a business day, you'll get your Bitcoins or one of those altcoins that they sell. Over at ExpressCoin.com, you can grab their smartphone app while you're at it, at ExpressCoin.com. We go back to Tim. He's in Naples, Florida. And Tim, you are telling us about this Gorilla Coin 
you're really excited about it. Why Gorilla Coin over the hundreds of alternatives out there? What makes this one so special to you? <clears throat> well, do you remember the slogan early on with Bitcoin, uh, be your own bank? Okay, sure. <clears throat> well, the thing, it's kind of to parallel, maybe to make an analogy to, to that slogan, I wouldn't go as far to say, you know, be your own savings and loan. But what I like about this is that, um, now, by the way, this is completely dependent on keeping the coin in the wallet. Now, if I decide I want to cash out or or donate it or, or whatever, and I, I send the Gorilla Coin to someone, then I'm no longer going to be uh, earning interest on that. Doesn't that, that, uh, change, uh, that's fine, but... Doesn't that defeat the purpose of an alternative currency? I mean, to have people hold the coin? I mean, I realize a lot of people are doing that with Bitcoin because they hope it's going to become more valuable over time. But at least with Bitcoin, there's a large economy of people spending the coin. They're, you know, they're gambling with it. They're buying Hustler.com, just now started to accept Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and, and uh, Litecoin. So they're buying things with it. Some people are buying things in real life at restaurants and bars and things like that. What's the point of having a currency that no one tra wants to transfer, that they have a disincentive, actually, to actually send to someone else? Well, these alternative currencies are usually developed well, for one specific thing, aren't they? Well, I don't know. I mean, I would presume... Well, right. Triple X coin, there's not really a lot of things other than porn that, you know would be in mind when using Triple X coin. I'm Hustler glad doesn't you take know triple, that. Hustler doesn't take Triple X coin. So I don't know who's taking these coins, but, but again, I'd like to know, ask Tim this question. Why would you want an alternative currency yeah. that has a disincentive of spending? Well, for me, this is an incentive to save, and I, I'm not going to get for, you know, 1% to 8% uh, interest at a bank uh, keeping, keeping it in the bank. And I understand there's no guarantee when I finally take it to the exchange. I mean, yeah, Gorilla Coin could... Increase in value, it could decrease in value. Well, right. If it goes down in you know. value, then your interest doesn't yeah. isn't worth anything, right? So you're getting interest in Gorilla Coin, right? And so therefore, if you start with ten Gorilla Coin and you end up with, let's say, you start with ten Gorilla Coin and they're worth ten dollars a piece, and I don't know what they're worth right now, but I bet you it's not ten dollars a piece. If you start with ten Gorilla Coin at ten dollars a piece, and then you end up uh, with 10 Gorilla Coin, or you know, you get two more Gorilla Coin over two years, or whatever the interest would be. You've got 12 Gorilla Coin, but now the price is five dollars a piece. You've lost money, even though you have more Gorilla Coin. Three you've and a half value. cents right now. That's the price of one Gorilla Coin. Yes. Okay. So I just don't. It, to to me, it seems like this is a very this is it's, you know it's it's difficult. The alt currencies. You have to push on people. You've got to pitch them on this, and they've got to be a real good sell. Like, in order for somebody to leave Bitcoin, a real currency that's usable internationally in a variety of different ways and growing in popularity every day, to leave Bitcoin or at least leave part of Bitcoin to put some money into one of these altcoins, it's got to be really persuasive. And I got to say, I'm not persuaded by this. I don't know about my co hosts. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm not, it's not so much I'm trying to sell it, you know, the, I wouldn't put all my Bitcoin in it. A bit, Bitcoin is for spending, like you said, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Namecoin uses the, the blockchain for something completely unrelated to, uh, finances. Um, so the block, you know, you've got confession coin, which is, seems kind of silly, but someone could do a whole fourth and fifth step all in one. Uh, you know, if they were in AA or something like that without even having to have a sponsor. I mean, so, so the blind, and I guess people are doing uh, arbitration and um, smart contracts and all kinds of things using the blockchain. So the, the concept, you know, and I hope, I hope some, somebody <clears throat> um, actually improves upon the idea of Gorilla Coin. Hmm. Uh, maybe makes it... Uh, more of an incentive to, to save and, and more stable when they cash out. Thanks, Tim, so, for your call you know, tonight. I don't man. even know if this is a good – okay. Yeah, I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I know that some of the alternative currencies are made for you know proof of concept. They want to show that, oh, well, this is possible. They want to – it's like a technical demo, essentially. They may be hoping, for instance, that their idea – 
will be uh, implemented within the official Bitcoin software or something like that. And I, I'm speculating as to the reasons for this because, I mean, I don't know how many of the alternative currencies really believe they can displace Bitcoin. I mean, right. you have to really be confident in your product. Well, a lot of these currencies are just speculative, but even so, um, I think there's a value in investing a little bit into maybe a few different ones, like ones that you think might turn out well in the future. But that's just, just gambling. I mean, let's just let's make well, it clear. Well, I mean, that'd be like saying that buying Bitcoin is gambling, and to a degree it, it is, is, but at the sa it's also an investment because, you know, if, say, for instance, inflation uh, hits the Federal Reserve notes quite hard and, like, the only thing you have left is your alternative currencies, those are going to be a little bit more valuable. So I guess... Uh, like, even if, you know, it is a gamble and you're buying an alternative currency that's like 12 cents a piece or something, eventually they're going to be more expensive, especially uh, in the future when more and more people start using cryptocurrency. Or maybe they won't be more expensive in the future. I mean, there's plenty of alternative currencies that have dipped down and gone away entirely. That's also a possibility. So it's a risk, right? Okay, right. so you're right. It is an investment. And like with other investments, you don't want to risk anything you can't afford to lose. So if you're going to buy an alternative currency, I would recommend dabbling in it, as you did, Ellen, with just a few dollars. Something that if if it goes to zero tomorrow, it's not going to be the end of the world It's for a you. hopeful experiment. We'll come back with more here in moments. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And you can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. Protection, success, incorporate your business. LLC. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at herbalhealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hoodia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. 
You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you on our site uh, over at freetalklive.com. It's brought to you by ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network where you actually have your data encrypted before it leaves your computer, meaning that your internet service provider will not know what you're doing online anymore as soon as you start using ProXPN. Right now, they're probably logging every website you visit, every search term that you enter, and then holding on to those logs in some cases as long as five years, which, of course, puts your privacy on the line. If you want to protect your privacy, go to ProXPN.com FTL. Download the software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, or Android devices. If you're a Linux user, setup's a little different for you, but as Daryl can attest to, it's pretty simple to get ProXPN working with Linux. Just contact their support department for the instructions. Uh, ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use code FTL20, and you get to upgrade for 5 bucks a month to their premium account, where you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world, and the ability to privately torrent. Plus, you can get past regionally blocked websites. And by the way, I had said that I wanted to get an answer from ProXPN as to you know, what is being done about the China situation. We had uh, Uber George call the show actually from China uh, in the past, and uh, like last week, I think it was. Yeah, it was last Friday. You were on I, I actually talked to Brian Sovereign on Sunday about that because I remember you had told George to send you and Brian an email. Which he didn't do, actually. I don't and think. that's what Brian had told me. So I said, hey, you might want to go listen to this part of the show because it would be good to get an answer so that we could tell people what's going on. Right. And so I actually sent an email out to the folks over at ProXPN, and I sent it out to the CEO and one of their guys. Uh, he had one of his guys get back to me here. Uh, and so I had asked him, I said, uh, we had a listener call in to talk about how ProXPN wasn't working in China, but he was otherwise very satisfied with the service and said their techs at ProXPN did their best to, to help. But it appears that China has been targeting VPN connections and just shutting them down. So if you're in China and you and try to use a VPN, you may not be very successful because of what they're calling the Great Firewall over in China. Uh, it's become more difficult within the last year to tunnel out uh, through the internet in China to get to uncensored internet, which is what ProXPN allows you to do typically in most places. You can get beyond, you know, if you're at school, you can get beyond the school firewall. If you're at work, you know, your workplace, you can you can get away from their blocking mechanism that they might have by using ProXPN. I wish I'd known about that in high school. Yeah, it's really handy. Uh, ProXPN.com slash FTL. Well, you're going to college soon. I guess they don't really block in college, do they? You know what? Uh, plans have changed on that, too. Uh, really? Actually, um, yeah, well, that was uh, some of the life changes I was talking about earlier. Oh. Um, yeah. I okay, can't... we'll talk more about that another time. Uh, personal <laughs> stuff. So, uh, back to ProXPN. Here's the response from ProXPN's Will Thompson. He says, hey, there are some issues in China that seem to have increased in regarding to uh, regards to the use of VPN services. The support team at ProXPN has thus far been able to identify two regions in China that do not have these issues, Hong Kong and Macau, including Shenzhen and Guangzhou areas, as well as Sichuan. Other areas such as Beijing, Shanghai, and other population centers seem to have this issue. So maybe in more rural uh, China, you're more able to get out with a, with a VPN, but they're cracking down. In, and I think I think uh, Uber George was in Beijing when he, when uh, he called. I think so. And 
one thing to be pointed out why they don't have the problems in Hong Kong and Macau, even though those are populated areas, Mm -hmm. those areas also have a good deal of autonomy from the Chinese government. It's true. Hong Kong, of course, uh, came back under Chinese control in the late 1990s. I I believe it was 99. I thought it was 97 or 98, but yeah, it could be one of those. Anyway, the, the Chinese... Uh, central communist government has not really cracked down on Hong Kong in the way a lot of people were afraid that they were going to. Right. So they kind of didn't want to touch the golden goose, so to speak. He goes on to say that he'll bring it up with the tech team to see if anything can be done. Uh, we have had some success in users switching to uh, OpenVPN and the ProXPN client, but as of late, this seems to have been locked down as well. So they're aware of the problem, and it sounds like they're you know they're working on it. But in most places of the world, and that's what uh, Uber George told us, was that the ProXPN was working very well to get around regional blocks. So go and try it for yourself. You get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and you can pay with Bitcoin at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use code FTL20 and save 20% on the price of the annual plan or even the monthly plan either way. But if you go with annual, you save even more at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Let's go to the phones to your calls and thoughts. Corey is on the line. And Corey, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, I'm gonna say it so none of you, because none of you did. That gorilla coin is a genuinely terrible idea. Tell me uh, why. Because it completely uh, just it completely forgets about the whole point of currencies. Currencies are units of exchanges uh, made to uh, simplify bartering. When you have four chickens in one piece of land, but the, the piece of land is four and a half chickens. The currency is there to to mitigate those problems. If you're not trading something, then it has no. It's not ever going to have value. And the people right. reason people are going to want this coin is because the feature set includes making some kind of inflated money off of holding the coin. It's like buying a bunch of tra- trading cards, not playing them, but expecting the value to go up by not playing them. That well, trading mean, cards. Nobody plays trading cards. Things. I mean, whoever did anybody ever trade trading cards? I'd never had that happen when well, I was a kid. I, I traded no uh, baseball cards. Really? Okay. Sorry, if, Corey. If no one's actually playing the games. They're just holding their cards and trying to keep them in mint condition. Then there's no not going to be any value increase. Do you see what I'm saying? No, yeah, I totally get it. That's why I was saying it didn't make any. The whole gorilla the coin reason, thing didn't make any sense the to reason me. Either. Because okay. you know, if nobody's using the gorilla coin to do anything with, if they're all just sitting on it. Then it'll never be use, useful. It'll never be valuable. Interest in a real market is because you are loan. Someone is loaning out the money for the money to be used. That's the reason you earn interest on money in a market. If you put money into a savings account, that money is being used by the bank to loan out to other people, and they are charging a cost for other people to use that money, which is the interest rate on the other end. Right. That's the reason you get interest. So everything about that coin is a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. And anything that has money in it needs to get out of it as quickly as they possibly can. Try yeah. to be the first one out on this one, not the first one in. Yeah. Um, so, but the reason I was actually good advice, calling, Corey. I'm glad you called to uh, to sum that up. But I know it wasn't your reason for calling, yeah. so go ahead. But my actual reason for for calling was immigration and terrorism. Okay. Um, I want to second what you were saying, which is this. Fear is the power of the government. Every time you've seen an increase in in the size of the state, the government and the size of its state, the the use, the the way that it uses force against people, has always been through fear. Whether it was the Red Scare, whether it's at times of war when they steal, when they take um, civil liberties away and trample on civil rights. I mean, look at uh, the V for Vendetta movie with the uh, the main bad guy, uh, John Hurt. I forget what his character's name was, but we must remind them of why they need us. He was the chancellor. Exactly, chancellor. And there's no terrorism right now. Right. Well, they're not saying that terrorists are sneaking into the country through the borders. They're just saying we need stronger border protection. No, they are saying terrorists are sneaking in through the borders. No, I mean, I'm, I'm saying this sarcastically. Oh, I see. That's, that's what they, the, we're not saying that terrorists are coming in, but we're not saying we just they need are. the better we're protection. We're saying it's possible that they are. Mm. Well, they can't, I mean, they, they can't say that they're failing at doing what they're, they're trying to do. They're not right. going to come out and say, oh, we're letting terrorists in. Um, they're going to miss, they're going to characterize the people who are coming 
coming across the border to work and take care of their families and be good people, um, they're characterizing them as the scum of the earth is what they're doing, trying to uh, drum up fear against immigrants. How dare right? they folk- take our jobs? Well, exactly. and I, it's terrorism. I, I heard somebody, I forget who it was because I would love to be able to give credit for this quote. They said, if you're having your job taken by someone with very few skills who doesn't speak the language, then you need more skills to get a better job. (laughs) Or a better work ethic or something. Well, not to mention some of these immigrants may actually be bringing skills and opportunities with them. Exactly. Or they might be coming here getting degrees and education here and then are unable to stay because the government kicks them out. Corey, do you remember a couple of years ago down in Georgia where they implemented this really strict immigration policy? A lot of the immigrants left. The farmers were saying, we need work. Food was rotting on the vine. They went to the prisons and contracted with the prison to get labor a lot of inmates volunteered, and then after one day, they, they said, bailed. I'm never going back. Put me in solitary confinement. Exactly. Um, that's the reason they're coming here. They're coming here to work, but they must characterize them as, as something evil or terrible right. uh, in order to drum up support and more support from themselves, really. Sure, they're monsters. Um, they're not humans just like you. Thanks, Corey, for the call. There's oh. more coming up here. Hour three's on the way. Free Talk Live. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, July 11th, 2014. Silver is trading at $21.47 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,338 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $625. Antiwar.com reports the UN Security Council held an emergency meeting on the escalating Israeli attack on the Gaza Strip yesterday, but with the US standing in their way, no resolution is likely, calling for a halt to the strikes. 
nor does Israel want one, and Israeli officials say that the goal is no longer a new ceasefire with Hamas. We don't want a ceasefire, declared Israeli envoy Ron Prosor, saying rather, our goal is to dismantle Hamas's rocket infrastructure. That's a nebulous mission, and one that doesn't seem particularly forwarded by bombing civilian homes, but reflects Israel's comfort with escalating more and more as the Hamas rocket fire, while a great talking point for the Hawks, is doing virtually no damage to Israel itself. Israel continues to mobilize more and more troops for a ground invasion of the tiny strip, which seems less speculative and more like a matter of time at this point. President Shimon Perez said yesterday that such an invasion could happen quite soon. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Wired reports, the government and legal community may still be arguing over whether Bitcoin can be defined as money, but the judge presiding over the landmark Silk Road drug case has declared that it's at least close enough to get you locked up for money laundering. In a ruling released Wednesday, Judge Catherine Forrest denied a motion by Ross Ulbricht, the 30-year-old alleged creator of the Silk Road online marketplace, to dismiss all criminal charges against him. Those charges include narcotics trafficking conspiracy conspiracy, money laundering, and hacking conspiracy charges, as well as a continuing criminal enterprise charge that's better known as the Kingpin Statute used to prosecute criminal gang and cartel leaders. That earlier motion, filed in April, raised potentially trial-shifting questions. Can Ulbrich really be accused of running a drug-selling conspiracy when he merely ran a website that made the narcotic sales possible? And can he be charged with money laundering when Bitcoin does not necessarily meet the requisite definition of money? According to the latest ruling by Forrest, yes and yes. She rejected every argument made in the defense's motion, starting with the idea that Ulbrich had merely provided an innocent platform for hosting the Silk Road's e-commerce, just as eBay might occasionally host illegal content without its knowledge. Forrest wrote in her 51-page order, Silk Road was specifically and intentionally designed for the purpose of facilitating unlawful transactions. Ulbrich is alleged to have knowingly and intentionally constructed and operated an expansive black market for selling and purchasing narcotics and malicious software and for laundering money. By far, the most closely followed argument in Ulbrich's April defense motion, however, had been its contention that Bitcoin users can't be accused of money laundering because Bitcoin isn't money. But Forrest tossed out that argument too. She points out in her opinion that neither the IRS nor FinCEN have the power to define money laundering laws, and she said it was easily clear enough that Bitcoin had functions as money in the Silk Road's dealings. Sellers using Silk Road are not alleged to have given their narcotics and malicious software away for free. They are alleged to have sold them. The money laundering statute is broad enough to encompass use of Bitcoins in financial transactions. Any other reading would, in the light of Bitcoin sold reason d'etre, be nonsensical. FPP Radio News is brought to you by $6 Shirts. $6 Shirts is one of the top t-shirt companies on the web, and they want to be the t-shirt company for the Bitcoin marketplace. Shop $6 Shirts using my affiliate link, 6.fppradio.com, and help support FPP Radio News. The AP reports... German government spokesman Steven Siebert said in a statement, the representative of the U.S. intelligence service at the U.S. embassy has been asked to leave Germany. U.S. officials described Germany's actions as extraordinary. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The American Psychiatric Association has issued an alarming study warning that the nation's used car salesmen are going completely insane and in some extreme cases practically giving cars away. The APA traces the outbreak of widespread hysteria to an apparent overstock of high quality late model cars begging to be driven off the lot today. Some severe symptoms include delusions, manic exuberance, and a psychotic commitment to offer the lowest prices guaranteed. Victims, families, are joining together to raise awareness of this serious psychological epidemic. The authorities found out how unbelievably low his prices were. They'd lock him up 
and throw away the key. You are not alone. Over half of America's used car salesmen are currently going bonkers. Car dealers suffering from this condition are prone to project their own disorders onto others. According to Mad Max, the car czar's website, you're out of your mind if you're not taking advantage of these low, low prices. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you'd like. Just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you in the studio this evening, it's Ian here. Daryl. And Ellen. Ellen's here courtesy of ALP. That is her show. Daryl's here courtesy of a few different shows and websites. FPP.cc being the main one for Daryl. Go and check out more of him there in written and audio form. FPP.cc as we go back into your phone calls and thoughts. Then coming up, we actually have a story about uh, this politician in Texas, Rick Perry, who is uh, talking trash about immigrants. He says there needs to be a show of force, and we'll get some more of uh, what he has to say here in moments. Let's first, though, go to Dave in Vegas on Skype. Hello, Dave. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Uh, I just wanted to mention uh, first real quick that immediately follow following the show, I'm actually interviewing Daryl on my show for the second time, um, Nonpartisan Liberty for All at uh, Blog Talk Radio. Uh, but what I actually wanted to uh, ask you guys about, I guess, and get your opinion on, I mean, pretty much what I'm doing now relating to activism is all through the media and just mm -hmm. doing an independent radio show uh, during the week. So I, I guess... Uh, what I wanted to get your opinion on is how how do you view that in ter terms of of activism? Because that's pretty much from doing that every night, and of course I got a full time job too. I mean that's pretty much all I have time to do for the most part. Sure. And that's my form of activism. I mean it's not like I'm doing a show that I'm getting paid for as part of my job, but that's how I guess uh, how I'm expressing myself and 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 being uh, active. So what what are your thoughts on on that? Well, even if you were getting paid, that doesn't make it any less of activism if you're doing it for the purpose of promoting the ideas of liberty. Right. Well, I just have to say that I understand completely because I don't get paid to do ALP either. It's just something that I do because I want to like get people to start thinking about ideas more. And to me, like I think it's, it's a very good form of activism because... Um, like, if you don't have time to go out and, like, do Robin Hooding or something all the time, you know, you find the time, you tell people what you think that, you know, you want to be teaching them or you want them to start thinking about or look into or anything like that. And, you know, knowledge is knowledge is power. I feel like if you're, you're spreading ideas, that's better than not doing anything at all. And yeah. it makes more of a, a permanent difference because if you can even change one person's mind then maybe they can go on to change more people's minds. It's true. You never know who you're going to awaken, who is going to be uh, you know, keyed into the ideas of freedom, will discover those ideas through your show. You know, It may be the next Ron Paul, right, who, who finds your show and the ideas of freedom through it. You never know whose life you're going to touch and in what way. And some people are a lot more comfortable you know, behind a microphone or behind the keyboard or behind a video camera than they are, you know, standing in town square holding a sign with a message. Because when you're standing in town square with a sign to promote a message, you're going to get a very nasty response immediately. You'll, you'll have people flipping you off. You'll have people yelling at you, get a job. Even if it's Saturday at noon, when a lot of people that have, you know, these Monday through Friday jobs... They're not working then. The people that are yelling at you to get a job, obviously they're not at work either because if they were, they wouldn't be able to yell at you to get a job. Yeah, they could be driving by and driving for work. They could be, but yeah. they're not at work at the moment that they're telling you to get a job. Yeah, unless their job is to drive people around or be a courier. Right, but those people then would not be yelling. If they are, then they're being very unprofessional the in their job. Sure. Well, not to mention holding a sign, uh, you're not really specifying what audience you're talking to, so you can get res so many varied responses, whereas if you have a podcast or something like that, then 
people are only going to be listening if they want to, like right. if they're looking to. That's why I said some people are more comfortable doing that because they don't want the immediate negative response. So uh, what was it? Ian, to, Go ahead, Dave. Oh, sorry. Um, t to your point, um, I did want to mention that really for the first time, I mean, I, I don't know how it's affected people, but uh, a guy who also has a radio show on Blog Talk Radio uh, talked yesterday that that he first heard about Cop Block from my show and he went to huh. the uh, cuz on Thursday nights we we have uh, some some people that are are have started their own uh Cop Blocks around the the country that that co-host the show and stuff so he had mentioned that he w wasn't aware of anything that's been going on with the police and and he heard about it on the show and went to the Cop Block site and now he's watching these videos and and so now he's aware of a lot of this stuff that's going on with the police so it's one person, but it's still it's at least. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, were you calling to to? Affect one person. I mean, were you calling to ask if this was actually activism? Because yeah, I mean, obviously it's it's activism. Anything that you do with the intention of trying to change things, you know, trying to change things right. around you, change society for what you consider to be the the better is uh, is activism. So yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, I, I feel that it is. I just wanted to get your opinion, and then I also wanted to, to relate it to the shows because I mentioned the Daryl coming on later too. There you so go. And what's the show by. called again? Go ahead and give us uh, another it's, plug. It's Nonpartisan Liberty for All. You can find it at Blog Talk Radio at Blog Talk Radio slash Nonpartisan Liberty for All. I just like to say I hate Blog Talk Radio, but I enjoyed listening. To your <laughs> I know you mentioned. I it. listened in on your interview with Daryl last time, and I thought you were a really good interview. I thought you asked good oh, questions, and thanks. that it, uh, you did a great job. Dave, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate thanks, hearing guys. from you. I just can't stand listening to blog talk radio they tend to sound like all the shows on blog talk radio tend to sound like they're hosted over the phone because they are right i just don't want to listen to a radio show so like is it that, just generally. the quality of Very the, poor the quality. it's the quality yeah they're okay. giving away radio radio shows on blog talk radio and the average person who may want to do a talk show doesn't know the technical side of things, so they don't have their own board or their own USB microphone. It's not complicated to get a, a decent audio setup at your house, but once you get an audio setup, then you know you've got to figure out a way to put the sound out there. And Blog Talk Radio handles a lot of that stuff, like they automatically do the podcast and things like that. Well, I take it you you can go through Spreaker, which is one of the services that I use for my archives. Mm -hmm. For both the daily five-minute newscast that I do as well as the weekly uh, two-hour radio show on Sundays, and they have a feature that allows you to broadcast for up to five hours at a time. Hmm. And does it auto-archive? It auto-archives. So you're saying that's separate from Blog Talk Radio? Yeah. You're saying Spreaker. better. You're saying better than It's better. Yes. And free. It's not free. No. But it's better. What's it cost, though? $15 a month. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, I mean, if you're serious about doing a podcast uh, or or live show or whatever form of media, YouTube video, then spend a little bit of money. Get uh, you know, get a decent microphone. I know Michael Dean's been ranting and raving about one particular model of microphone that he's put up on, uh, I don't know if it's Creamy Radio Audio, I think is his website, Creamy yes. Radio Audio. So there's all kinds of suggestions, and you can get decent equipment these days for very, very cheap. Put a little bit of money in and make your show sound a cut above the rest of them. I mean, if I know Michael Dean was actually talking about on uh, Freedom Fiends recently how he wants to help the next generation of liberty oriented talk shows come, yes. come forward, you know, find 500 or 100, find, find 100 people that are willing to do a show. And of those 100 people, 50 of them are going to stop after, before six months. Of those 50 that are remaining, maybe five of them will be really talented and really good. And, you know, the other 20 some will be okay, worth uh, worth it, uh, worth listening to. If you want to rise above the pack of 500 and be in the top tier of, you know, at least okay slash learning slash getting more talented over time, you've got to have a show that's worth listening to and having decent audio helps with that. And one thing that uh, Michael does that helps these people out is he's got the, you know, what he calls the Fiends Archives that are on Torrent, mm -hmm. I recently released an audio book yep. that I recorded. Uh, I published the physical book, Authoritarian Sociopathy, written by Davi Barker. And I'm trying to get the book available on Audible. Mm -hmm. And that takes a while for Audible to approve it and get it put up. So I figured, in the meantime, Davi has approved the files. Let's put it out on Torrent. 
Okay. And Michael Dean put it up on his RSS feed for his torrent. And within a matter of hours, 50 people were seeding the thing. That's awesome. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. A show of force, they say, is needed to stop the border crossings, etc. We'll see what uh, Rick Perry, some politician in Texas, what he has to say. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can take control of the airwaves on Free Talk Live. Business owners, listen up. Give me an Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation. Protection. Protection. Success. Incorporate your business. L-L-C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, July 11th, 2014, gold opened at 1337.70. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1386.07, 693.04 for a half ounce, or 342.52 for a quarter ounce. That's 1386.07, 693.04, and 346.52. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why bank, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free 
Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. So all you have to do is dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Really great news coming out of Massachusetts Supreme Court. We've got to get to that when we get a chance. Your call's certainly welcome about whatever you want to discuss. You can also join us online at freetalklive.com. Archives, we've got them. They go all the way back to late 2006. You just click and download, and they're yours for free at freetalklive.com. Do you need focus? Feeling fatigued? Trying to get that extra edge when it counts? Look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. And businessmen around the world are talking about how modafinil from modup.net is making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. They make it affordable at modup.net for everyone to take advantage of the benefits of modafinil by being 80 to 85% lower priced than the brand name drug. But don't mistake low prices for inferior quality. They ensure that purity and potency are consistent to that of the branded version. Now remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. Oh, by the way, modup.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community. You save 33% when you pay with Bitcoin at modup, M-O-D-U-P, modup.net. And for an even better deal, use code FTL at checkout and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So again, code FTL, modup.net. Let's continue here. We'll do more on immigration in a moment. First, James is in Arizona you're on Free Talk Live, James. Yes, Ian. You are on the air. Hello, Ian. Hello, James. Very Go good. ahead. Speaking of so-called... Oh, yeah, Ian. Speaking of so-called conservative clones, are you with me? Or are you we're pretending li- not to be able to hear me, or what? No, we're, we're listening, James. It's when you okay. close your mouth and don't Very talk. Very good. Speaking of... Well, when I hear dead air, I don't even know if I'm on it. And you know that. That's why you're playing a game with me. But speaking of so-called conservative clones, um, truth is not a progressive value. And as far as I'm concerned, you and Daryl and sadly Alan and all your other guest hosts on Free Talk Live are just progressives of a right-wing bent (laughs) as opposed to, say, your neighbor Tom Hartman. No, it's not funny. It's true. Truth is not a... Not a value to okay, you. Okay, describe at all. what and a progressive like is. People. I don't really have an agenda, and I don't like those labels either. Yeah, describe what a progressive is and why it is that the hosts of Free Talk okay, Live are uh, progressives. Well, yours is of a right wing variety. You're libertine. You're not libertarian, you're libertine. I'm a libertarian who actually does respect the fact that the state does exist, whether I like the size of it or not. I live in the real world, and I don't demonize people. Like and I don't lie for my cause. Like Daryl, you open up every one of your broadcasts, your newscasts, with how much Bitcoin's worth in dollars. So is Bitcoin money or not? Bitcoin is a currency. You can't answer the truth, can you? It's money. It's <laughs> Bitcoin is a currency. Currency. What does this it's have cinema. to do with demonizing it's a people? Of currency and money. Because you, you don't tell the truth, Alan. You're defending your hero, Ross Ulbrook, who rightfully had that judge rule against him because he is a narco-capitalist online facilitating the sale of clandestine and illegal drugs. Whether you think they should be legal or not, they are. And he is a criminal. And you're lying for his cause. But go, Wait, why I am I lying? To, I agree with you in the why, fact that it is illegal and that I'm he is being criminalized. You, Alan, I'm talking that. about Daryl. You were talking, talking about to Alan just a moment ago. If he can't say if it is money or not, she butted in, Ian. Check the tape. Right. Uh, well, Daryl, is it money right or now. not? Goodbye. 855 450 freeze, the toll free number. That's 855 450 3733. Bitcoin, money, Daryl. So to. You know, catch everybody up to speed about what he was talking about. The daily five minute newscast that I do, one of the stories in today's was about the judge's ruling on Wednesday in the Silk Road case, mm-hmm, which to, denied all of Ross Ulbricht's motion. Right. And the judge did not even rule that Bitcoin was money. She said that Bitcoin was close enough to money mm-hmm. that the money laundering charge can go forward. Right. And she also ruled that because 
Ross Ulbricht allegedly created the Silk Road Marketplace, and the Silk Road Marketplace was on the Tor Network, and because the Silk Road Marketplace used Bitcoin, and because illegal substances were sold on the Silk Road Marketplace, that that obviously means that the intent for the Silk Road Marketplace was to create this drug market, so therefore the kingpin charge can go forward. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think it's pretty clear the intent for the Silk Road was to create an online place where drugs and other illegal things could be sold. I, th I think that's pretty clear. Uh, I think the, the intent the was for a marketplace to where anything could be sold. Not anything. There were certain things that were prohibited from sale on Silk Road, specifically weapons, child pornography, and poisons. Uh, so there was not was not an open marketplace. Um, but anyway, it was pretty. It's pretty clear based on the you know the statements of the founders of the website that they were well aware of the type of business that was being done there. Um, not to say that it should be a crime. I mean, what Ross Ulbricht did was heroic and brave, and he he brought harm reduction to the black market and saved literally saved people's lives. Probably prevented a lot of people from being beaten and robbed in real life drug deal uh, real life drug deals. So to me, the guy's a hero, and I'm I'm grateful that we've uh, been able to connect with his mother and. Talk to her about that. Right. Um, and also, I, I don't quite understand where that color is coming from. I feel He a was coming from all over the place. You know, so I don't know if you noticed. I don't, I don't feel like I've ever demonized any person. I'm, I'm generally a positive, you know, try to look at the brighter side of things. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel slightly offended for both myself and for both of you because I, I don't see how we've been lying to anybody. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how it's a lie to tell people what the, Bitcoin the, is trading at. The price of Bitcoin yeah, I mean, what was he suggesting there that you should just say and one Bitcoin and not give a price, not not relate right, it to anything? I I, I also give the price of silver and gold in dollars, right? Because that's what we use. It helps people understand what one of those things right, is like currently valued at. One ounce of silver is worth one ounce of silver. One ounce of gold is worth right. one ounce of gold, I mean, and we... one Bitcoin is worth one Bitcoin. Right. <laughs> like that doesn't help anybody know. Yeah how to trade these things i could just as easily say you know a dozen chickens are worth five dollars and 14 cents right and talking about this does not discredit the fact that we, like we all acknowledge that the government exists whether we like it or not it's just that like you don't recognize the laws as legitimate right. yeah and then he goes on and calls himself a libertarian which it's people like wit I mean, or James in Arizona, he used to call with the name Wit. But anyway, people like James in Arizona who are giving libertarians a bad name. People yes. who don't understand the principles of non-aggression, people who embrace war, uh, immigration restrictions, taxes, believe you know the government needs to be larger in some areas, and yeah, they're not, not libertarian. Libertarianism to me was always you believed that the government was not the solution, that, that coercion and force... Whatever the issue, however important the issue is to you, however earth-shattering and, you know, really important you think it is, it's not okay to use force against your neighbor. Not okay to threaten force against your neighbor in order to get that to happen. To me, that's what libertarianism was, and uh, James in Arizona doesn't embody much of that. More on the way here. You can take control on Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Listen up, all you preppers and survival enthusiasts. Sigma 3 Survival School has a brand new survival instructor training program that will teach you everything you need to know about survival and then license you to teach our survival programs so you can make a substantial profit from it. If you have always wanted to learn to be completely self-reliant and would like to make money at it, then check out Sigma 3 Survival School Survival Instructor Program at survivalschool.us or call 479-561-3886 today. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. 
Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com so you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. The call just came in over the police radio. Yeah, yeah, right here. It's just me and my producer, Glenn, in a camera. Buckle up. We don't know where in the mall the shots were fired. We don't know what's going on. It looks like a security guard. I'm going to see what, see what he knows. Turns out he wasn't a security guard. He was just a guy in a blue suit. We still have zero information. Where do we go next? I have no idea. My gut says that way. Come on. I see an ambulance. Confirmed ambulance site. You'll see this space by the curb where an ambulance was parked just moments ago. Do you have any idea where the shooter is? I was being stonewalled by police, but I couldn't let that stop me. I spoke to a woman who said that she saw a man being escorted through the mall by police. Could this be the shooter? According to the description, he was a male, aged somewhere between 20 and 60. He's either Caucasian or part Latino or something like that. He was wearing some kind of a jacket. I wrote something else here, but he got smudged. However, that information later turned out to be false. The shooter, if there is one, remains at large. Needless to say, our thoughts are with the victims here today, if there are any, which we don't know yet. This is the Onion News Network. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Talk live. You can bring up anything you want. The toll free number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com and you can create the content there on the site. What you see as you roll down the front page there, those are news items usually submitted by listeners like you. Every now and then Mark or myself might submit one there, but 99% of the time it's it's you guys. You submit the uh, the content, then other listeners like you can vote on the content. You can vote as well. Vote up the stuff you like, you can vote down stuff you don't like, and then we'll know what you, the aggregate of the listenership thinks is interesting when we go to freetalklive.com and so can you so go and get interactive over there and uh, you'll find that our website unlike a lot of the uh, websites in the talk radio business is totally free in fact you'll get more for free at freetalklive.com than you'll probably pay for on some of those other shows websites story here is from cbs of houston out of austin texas in this case texas governor rick perry believes it's time to put a show of force on the border in an effort to halt the influx of immigrants. Perry, who visited the Texas-Mexican border on Thursday, told Fox News the way to secure the border is to put boots on the ground. He said, quote, The way to stop it is to secure this border with a show of force, both military and other law enforcement-wise, and we can do that said Perry to Fox News. He stated that 1,000 National Guard troops and 3,000 Border Patrol agents are needed to secure the Texas border, saying that, quote, this is, if not the number one, one of the highest priorities for this country from a national security standpoint is making sure this border is secure. Perry said that long, you can tell it's uh, election season because that's really the only time this becomes a, a major issue 
the immigration. Oh, this is thing. when they key in on the issues that really touch people. Sure. sure. But the funny them. thing is, Rick Perry's not running for anything this year. Oh, really? He might be setting himself up for 2016, though. What, for governor or for uh, president? For president. Yeah, very well possible. Because remember, during 2012, he said that God told me to run and that <laughs> something about I would win if I did. Didn't work out, huh? But he didn't necessarily say God told me to run this year and that I would win. Mm, so you know, maybe it's some future date. Perry said law enforcement officials need to be placed closer to the border instead of dozens of miles back saying this administration has historically had them back 40 to 50 miles in the apprehension business. I'm interested in the prevention business. We ought to be stopping people from crossing the border, not apprehending them after they get inland. So, of course, you know, this is the old perspective that just beef up the border, build a big old fence, have helicopters, gun turrets, all kinds of nonsense, and, you know, spend a boatload of taxpayer dollars building some ridiculous wall and paying bureaucrats upon bureaucrats upon bureaucrats, which, of course, you know, if you just increase the number of bureaucrats on the border, it just means you have to pay more money to get a load of drugs or or people through if you're a coyote or a smuggler. It's not that this is going to actually stop people from coming through, but it, what it will do is it'll make people like Rick Perry look like they're some sort of hero and that they're trying to do something to stop the scourge of immigration. Right, and and like he keeps saying, like we need more borders, borders, borders. But what is the ultimate goal? Because I I just don't get this. Because generally, when to destroy freedom. Generally, when people move to the U.S. or people that are even born here that live and work here. They produce more than they consume. So more people coming into the country, that would mean more prosperity for everyone else. Oh, Ellen, you and all your economics and logic. I mean, come on. Don't you know they're stealing people's jobs and bringing over uh, Or creating leprosy? new ones. See, like, I just don't understand. It's not like we all live on the same planet and we're all the same species and have the same capabilities. Right, and... Well, one thing that's interesting, a lot of the people that are really against immigration of any kind, whether it be the people that fill out the paperwork and spend thousands upon thousands of dollars to you know do it the quote unquote right way, or the people who commit a federal violation that is akin to a jaywalking ticket, you know that they're opposed to all of this on the grounds of, well, they're getting welfare. So what they're really opposed to is the welfare state, not the actual act of immigration, but they want to blame immigrants on the fact that there is welfare that some people are taking advantage well, of. Well, obviously there's a problem with the system if these people aren't even citizens and they can still get the same benefits. Like I don't even know if the people that are coming here you know, illegally are getting the benefits, but that's the claim. I doubt it, but I just don't understand what the big disagreement with people moving to the U.S. is. Just like Rick Perry's claim of these people that aren't here legally are getting on airplanes without identification when, right, as I said earlier, and- anybody can get on an airplane without identification. You just have to get the extra blue glove love. And so- it's extra mis- it's misleading, I know, and I, I just don't understand. Like, even if, you know, there was a huge influx of people to the U.S., what is the worst that could possibly happen? Um, nothing. And things would be better, as you've pointed out, Ellen. If people come here, they bring skills, they bring desire, they bring entrepreneurial spirit. They But they're not paying taxes, and that's what the Republicans want. They want these people to pay taxes. Anybody who opens up a business is going to be paying taxes right, of but some sort. No, if you're coming here as a migrant farmer, yeah. you're getting paid cash. You're not filling out a 1040 at the end of the year. You're not paying your fair share. So it's slave-on-slave violence. It is slave-on-slave violence. Some people are upset because they pay taxes. They're scared of the government. But these other people are coming here. They're brave enough to actually defy the government in multiple ways. That probably embarrasses people at some level, that they wish they had the courage of an immigrant. They wish they had the courage to pick up their lives and move to a better place. They wish they had the courage to stand up to the state and and not pay taxes. Yeah, and and they want want to build this wall and, and... and put up, uh, you know, increase, uh, you know, border patrol so that people don't come in. But 
the more they do that, the more I feel like they're not keeping people out. They're like holding everyone inside. Yes. And like I don't think they cell. realize that. I think that all they're focused on is how bad the immigrants are. And they, they well, we got to fix this with guns. We need more armed men on the border and we're going to put a stop to this. And they don't realize that when they create this apparatus, they're just imprisoning themselves. They're just pouring money into isolating people. And I just like the the motivation astounds me because I don't understand the extreme hatred that people feel for, you know, people who are trying to escape, you know, a poverty stricken country where they come from that, you know, maybe they have more opportunity. In the I don't West. understand it either, but there are some reasons that we've been given over the years. And one of them that is don't the, is, satisfy anyone's curiosity. Well, one of them is the fear of a lose of a lost job. And it's certainly true that some Americans have likely lost a job to somebody who came here from another country and was willing to work for less, was willing to get up on a roof and sling around tar and shingles or go out in the hot sun and you know break their back picking vegetables or fruits. They were willing to come in here and do that for cheaper just so they could get a foothold in the marketplace here and start their life. And so I could understand why if you were a union uh, construction worker who was used to getting paid $30 an hour to, you know, sling some bricks around a construction yard and then, you know, some uh, some folks come in from Mexico who are willing to do it for 10 bucks an hour and they're doing just as good of a job as you. Or better. Or a better job as you. Then, you know, I can understand why somebody would be upset about that. But that's not a reason to uh, advocate for a police state. It's a reason for you to bone up on your skills and to get more competitive in the marketplace or find a new role in life, find a new thing to do. You don't have to do the same thing you've always done for all of your life. I know, and it seems kind of childish, like getting upset. Well, he gets paid more than I do. He got the job because yeah. he was better at it than me. And like throwing a hissy fit fair. and telling them to leave instead of actually like stepping up to the plate. And competing. And, yeah, and increasing your own skills. Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. It's laziness, it's fear, it's uh, hatred of the other, you know, creating an enemy where one doesn't exist when in point of fact it's only inside yourself where the, the you know, the hatred uh, exists. Right, but this this competition that arises from people immigrating here, that's like what the like that's where all the prosperity of the nation came from. It's true. Was people moving here and getting these jobs and producing well, All of these Ellen, various goods. So long as they come here legally, it's fine, is what most of the people who want to stop immigration uh, will say. They'll, they need to help pay for the roads they'll fall that back are melting. On the legal excuse. Okay, then let's make it easier for people to come here legally. That would be nice, right? 855 450 free. Unfortunately, it's incredibly arduous, difficult, and expensive. And not to mention bureaucratic and frustrating to try to come here legally. So I don't blame someone who doesn't want to try. It's Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-N-I-X.com. 
or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to help a hardworking person get their business off the ground? Then join me in enjoying some BuzzBox coffee. Let's make a difference one cup at a time. Join us in helping people buy their own coffee farms through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Free Talk Live coffee drinkers will truly change lives forever. To get the best coffee you've ever tasted, it's organic, shade-grown, and top 1% Arabica grade. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The first pound's free, just cover shipping. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. 450 free. This is Free Talk Live, and you can take control even in these remaining moments. There's enough time for you with your thoughts. Just dial on in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online at freetalklive.com, where you can enjoy all the features on the site on the house. So go and enjoy that. We'll continue here. Go to your phone calls and thoughts. Tom is in Maryland. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Tom. Good evening, folks. I just wanted to make a counterpoint on the immigration issue. I do see your points um, that you make. Uh, However, uh, I see them only in a society that would be the one that you would prefer. And right now, we happen to be living in a society where there are laws that good, honest people have been following. So when you have an influx of folks who are not following those same laws— a lot of the people who've been waiting on the list, say, for example, to, to immigrate here, they're going to feel uh, put off by that in, in a very big way. So I think, you know, for that reason alone, I think we should look at the issue of illegal immigration as one that can't simply be tolerated uh, completely when uh, we do have this current system. Tom, are you suggesting earlier that, that people who don't follow uh, the laws are somehow bad people? Well, I understand how, like, if you're on an, a list waiting to immigrate legally, like, you would feel slighted if, if somebody took the risk and got in before you did. But you, so shouldn't, you shouldn't despise exactly. people just because they take risks that you're not willing to. Well, I think if we're going to respect the rule of law as it currently stands, why should I respect? You know, well, excuse me. Why it, should I right? respect a bunch of bureaucrats in Washington D.C. and politicians who are thugs and scum of the earth? Why should I respect anything they write down on a piece of paper? Oh, believe me, there's a, a lot of laws that I don't respect, and I don't think you should respect the well, people then shouldn't we whom you've just mentioned. So I'm then shouldn't about, we be applauding people who disobey bad laws? 
Well, I think you're on a fast track to complete anarchy, which I don't think you no. support. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong I about that. I support peace. I support— I can tell you what I've seen. I, I support peace. I don't I, support, I lo- I don't support who, no rules. Who, I support, you know, investigating real crime, like by murderers and rapists and things like that. But if somebody hasn't hurt anybody else and they're prohibited from doing something by law, whether it's crossing some imaginary line in the sand or putting a, a plant in their pocket, um, I think those people are heroes for breaking those uh, breaking those laws. Shouldn't good people disobey bad laws? Yes. Let me, let me, let me, Leave you with one thing to think about. If you had an influx of folks from another country who didn't speak your language mm-hmm. move into your neighborhood and not obey any of the current standing laws, committed crimes, uh, did. Who cares if they don't? Ex- hold on. Were, who cares if they don't uh, speak not, your language? If they're committing crimes by hurting other people, then I would have a problem with that. But if they just move in and are smoking pot on their front porch, then I don't care. That doesn't bother me. Yeah, that doesn't have an effect on you personally if they're not following the same rules that you do. As long as they're not harming you, right? Well, it, it does. I've seen this happen. What have you I've seen, seen happen before? Where you've had exactly what I'm. I've seen very large groups of Spanish-speaking, non-English-speaking uh, folks move into the city of Baltimore. I've seen the community that had been there for many years displaced by this. I've seen where police services and ambulance services were requested. Uh, they would respond, and you would have uh, an inability to communicate at all with these people who have no desire to integrate into society and no That's desire nonsense. whatsoever to learn the language. It's, it's no nonsense, country. Tom. It's just paranoid nonsense. The fact is, generation. It, it takes two generations, typically, for uh, for immigrants to fully integrate into society and learn the language. Obviously, the week after you move here, if you speak a foreign language, you're not going to necessarily pick it up right away. But most of them are interested in coming to be able to communicate with people. Why wouldn't they be? Let, let's look at Europe for a second because in Europe they have the European yeah, Union hold on let, let let me make my point Tom and then you can respond in Europe they have the European Union which means that people from any country in the European Union can go to any other country in the European Union there are dozens of languages that are spoken in Europe not to mention do you Spanish think is that the most- people do you think that people from Portugal should not be allowed to travel to Slovakia because they speak a different language and there might be a language barrier if the person from Portugal winds up getting hit by a car in Slovakia. Not not at all. Uh, I'm simply saying, and I think you've made my point for me, that there has to be a certain amount of control in terms of how quickly this occurs. If there's no controls whatsoever and you have a very large influx of two different cultures, you're just asking for trouble. I, I've seen this happen firsthand. You know, what bothers me is people who are constantly advocating for more control over their neighbors, over their peaceful neighbors. There's no conflict whatsoever with people moving into a place. Look at Places like Chinatown, for instance, Little Italy. I mean, there are there are these places in the United States which, in many cases today, are populated with people who don't speak much, if at all, any English. And you know what? I've been able to walk into many a Chinese food restaurant and order without having to really be able to speak the language or have them accurately speak my language. And the food was good, and it was delivered quick and hot, and uh, everybody was happy uh, in the deal. So I just don't understand the fear. I don't understand the desire to control. And when you have a desire to control others, don't be surprised, Tom, when you end up finding yourself controlled. Thank you for the call tonight. I uh, appreciate hearing from you. I don't appreciate the viewpoint because, you know, you're asking for control. You want more police and border patrol. You want more restrictions. You want uh, walls to be built. As Ellen pointed out, you're just going to be creating the methods uh, and the, you know, the, uh, the ways to control your actions. They already have internal checkpoints that are stopping people in the United States who are driving around within the 100 miles of the southern and northern borders. I don't know about you, but I don't like the idea of having to show my papers or state citizenship or whatever to these bureaucrats. 
I don't owe them anything. I just want to go where I'm going and not be hassled. And not to mention that history points out time and time again that the more you advocate for control, that usually backfires and you end up suffering the consequences for that. And <laughs> uh, like as far as immigration goes, I think we're talking mostly about Mexican immigrants. Spanish is, what, the second most popular language in the world? Uh, and I, 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 think I think it's, it's third. Uh, Mandarin Chinese, Chinese is the most spoken. English is... The most, the second most widely spoken, but I think there are more native Spanish speakers than native English speakers. Right, and I, I can't imagine that it would be difficult to learn a few like basic phrases. Definitely I'm sure not. you could pick it up within a few weeks if if you just like came here from Guatemala or something. And the incentive is there to pick up another language because you want to be able to interact with people that you're around. Yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's a natural drive to be able to connect with other human beings. So eventually you're going to want to pick up some English if everyone around you is speaking English. Especially if you're escaping from a country where you don't feel welcome or feel like you can create a livelihood for yourself and you're coming here to do exactly that. There's yep. only one way to stop immigration, and that's to create a total police state with checkpoints everywhere and with police and jackboots. No, and no, Ian. The one way to stop immigration from one country to another is to have a one-world government where the entire globe is a singular country, and then you don't have to worry about you know whether or not somebody crosses from one place to another. Well, on one hand, I like the idea of getting rid of borders, but I don't like the idea of having a one-world government. So, can we have? No, part that of sounds that, a little too 1984. I, I want there. I want there to be seven billion nations on the globe. <laughs> and the reason I say seven billion is because that's people. approximately how many people there are. Let's get Chris on the line here in Connecticut for the remaining moments here. Chris, go ahead quickly. Hey, good evening, Ian. Hey, um, I just want to make a comment on open borders and such. As a libertarian myself, this is the last thing I'm trying to overcome, I guess, and I don't necessarily think I ever will. Um, I, I can understand all the arguments for open borders, such as, you know, that they're, they're taking our jobs. I'm not scared of that. I'm not scared of disease, terrorism, um, anything else, language barriers. The one thing that concerns me is a an influx of socialists into the area and, you know, socialist mooches. What and we're already is, enslaved in this pretty fascist society. Is there any evidence whatsoever? I, I, don't, that, I don't have any numbers. But yeah, it seems to me that it's pretty... Totally, I see it on the street for damn sure. For damn sure, I see it on the street anecdotally. But I think it's worth further investigation is all I'm saying. Well, I think there are plenty of people that come here who are trying to escape from socialism as well. So... I don't really care personally because I'm not going to go along with whatever the program is, whatever they want to pass. You know, if they want to force their way on me, I'm not going to cooperate and I'm going to opt out of whatever the, you know, the force program is. I'm out of time for tonight, but we'll be back tomorrow. You can join us online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. We'll join you tomorrow for the live Saturday show. Talk to you then. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, July 11th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,338, silver opened at $2,145, and Bitcoin is trading at $628. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One tera hash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com or call them up 844-BITMAIN. That's 844-248-6246. In the news, on Wednesday, the alleged creator of the online marketplace Silk Road was denied his bid for dismissal of a federal indictment, which accuses him of laundering money and being involved with illegal drug trade. Ross Ulbricht denied charges of money laundering, stating that bitcoins are not money. U.S. District Judge Catherine Forrest disagreed, stating that money could be laundered using the online cryptocurrency. Judge Forrest said Ulbricht played the role of intermediary between website users, acting as a sort of godfather. Ulbricht is facing four counts of conspiracy, including engaging in a continuing criminal enterprise, which carries a maximum sentence of life behind bars. The trial is scheduled to begin November 3rd. A study by the Crime Prevention Research Center found that a little over 11 million Americans now have permits to carry concealed weapons, up from 4.5 million in 2007. According to the report, violent crime rates dropped by 22% while permits to carry rose 146%. Increasing gun ownership, litigation, and new state laws have all contributed to the rise in concealed carry permits, reported KSAZ. Currently, Florida has the most active concealed carry permits, with Texas coming in second. Wichita Falls, Texas has become the second city in the state to recycle treated wastewater to help bolster drinking supplies, according to CBS News. Located near the Oklahoma border, the city began reusing millions of gallons of water at the River Road Waste Treatment Plant that's been purified to meet government standards. The recycled water is sent through a 12-mile pipeline into the Cypress Water Treatment Plant where it receives additional purification. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Mention promo code LIBERTY, and when you order 10 or more posters, you get 10 free. Online at affordablesound.com, or call them up, 512-459-5253. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, July 11th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Former NSA contractor Edward Snowden officially filed a petition to extend his asylum in Russia for another year, as reported by the Russian Times. The Federal Migration Service is responsible for deciding whether Snowden will be allowed to stay, but has not yet commented on the application. While Snowden